that. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, before we get started, just um, if anybody hasn't signed in um, for the meeting, um, feel free to do so over there either now or on, on the way out just so that we make sure that everybody was recorded in there for this evening. Um, and then once we get going, um, because I'm sure a lot of you are here for one or two topics this evening. Just make sure that when it's your opportunity uh, to speak that you make sure that you say your name um, so that we have it for the record. Um, so uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions or are we good to approve as? We need to add the um, Oh, that's right. Bar had sent in a second request to cater. So I was thinking we could just add it when you do their other one. Okay, so we'll add a second catering license to under the Babes Bar request. I, I have a question. I don't have a copy of the agenda, so I can't see, but is there any place to just bring up other topics? Yep. Yep, okay. public comment. Just sure. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so other than the Babes addition, anything else? I just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's see on there. Okay, so um, so this evening we've we've done the public comment first. Um, we don't have any appointments this evening, other than uh, the rest of everything that we're going to do is going to be agenda items. So the public comment period is is an op opportunity to speak about a topic that's not on the agenda for this evening. Um, so now would be your chance. If you have anything, just raise your hand. I'll I'll. I'll uh, I'll select you in and just make sure that you just state your name for the record. And okay. um, we are coming to you as concerned citizens of fire lane number one in Bethel. And what, what was your name? I would prefer to remain anonymous because the individual who is causing the issues on our road seeks retaliation in the form of physical violence, as Sean can attest. My name is Sean Moore. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the multiple zoning violations, the Bethel Town bylaw zoning violations that are happening on Fire Lane. I, we submitted a letter in November that listed them. It is four pages long for this individual, Joel Gowan. And things have escalated since then, and the town has done nothing. And we were advised by the police this week to come speak at the select board meeting to raise the issue and make something happen because nothing is happening and now he has been resorting to violence and verbal assaults, physical threats, and the police can't do anything. Poor Sean tried to defend himself and now is also facing charges because they are both considered at fault because he defended himself. And it is really, we don't feel safe on our road. We can't let our son out. He can't yeah. ride his bike. He can't, you know, he, we had to change his school bus stop so that he wouldn't even be seen by this individual because it was scary and now we're, I mean, we had police uh, this past week, police have to keep coming up. I just wanted to add that one of the major issues that we face on fire lane has been an issue for a long time and it's one that we all kind of went into knowing full well that we live on a private road that is not maintained by the town and we all understand the consequences, I guess, that that carries, however, that's also become this legal gray area for us to endure where he literally acts with impunity on this road and does whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Oscar cannot and will not touch him. He says the right of ways are 50 feet wide and they're his. And he rides dirt bikes, four wheelers. He was doing donuts in front of Sean's open garage and throwing rocks and dirt in. I mean, it's really a problem. And what can the town do about it? He has put a septic in down there at some time. He's in a camper. They didn't live in there all summer. They're not Since in April camper. 3rd, they moved it in, and they've been living there full time in it with no power, no septic, no running water. It's all violations. So and we we did contact. Um, the state enforcement officer who does septic because the town of Bethel doesn't have septic regulations. You have to adhere to the state. So uh, Dan Mason is his name. So Kelly told me about, I think you, some, someone called and I, I want to say it was, it was sometime last week anyways. And um, first of all, I just want to say I'm so sorry to hear about what's going on. And um, so we did call Dan and he is very good. He lives in you know this area, so he will definitely go up and pay a visit and figure out the septic issue. Um, 
we are happy to pursue zoning violations. I had talked to Oscar about something and um, a while ago about what was going on up there. And unfortunately, you're right, because it's become this, le it is a legal gray area. Usually when people share property like that, a lot of times they enter into a road maintenance agreement. So everybody who lives there. So unfortunately, um, obviously it's a legal situation. So you guys are doing totally the right thing by calling the police as often as you need to. Um, but as far as the right of way and that, that's nothing the town can touch because it's a civil matter because it's a dispute between the property owners, unfortunately. But um, I am certainly, I don't remember seeing the four page letter about zoning. The, I would love it, thank you. And I will definitely this deal with it. This is just what was happening in November. Okay, and I know there's more because I have spoken myself with Oscar. We talked about a couple things. So I will definitely, um, what we can do is if we find that there's zoning and for infractions and we send a letter. And they, but I will tell you, here's what happens. It becomes a notice of alleged violation which goes in the land records. Um, it's not a big weighty thing. It can eventually um, go to a fine, but you know what happens. People don't pay it. It becomes this whole situation. But it doesn't mean we don't take it seriously and that we can't do it. But it's not going to shut down anything, you know what I mean, that's possibly happening there in a, in a quick hurry. With the camper violation, they can't be like forced off the land? Because they live, I think that if, I don't remember that section of zoning off the top of my head, but I feel like if the owner of the land, which is them, has permission, then I think their camper can stay there for a specific no, period of time. It's but like so many that's days. That's if there's already a house, there can be a camper in the yard. Okay, I have to reread this. But if it's just raw land with no facilities, you cannot live in a camper. Okay, good. Then, but then it's like I said, I'll go through it because um, I am quite sure there's more than one violation. So we certainly will send the certified letter and go through the steps, but it's not, like I said, an overnight thing because what we have to do is we have to go to court. So then it becomes an enforcement issue for us. So we're in the same boat you are, it's legal. There's no, no one has an authority to go up and like throw anyone off their property, of course. We need the town to enforce what law rules there are. Absolutely, and we're happy to, to do that. But as far as the, the, the road, that's you know a, a legal situation, and um, and I know that Oscar had been up there, and I'm sure he's probably given you his number to get a hold of him. And he doesn't answer, and he's in bad reception, and it takes him three days to get back to us, and it's just not you know. And calling the police it takes them an hour. He said he couldn't do nothing. Like yeah. Sean was bloody last Wednesday night, has a broken eye socket, and the police still took an hour to get there. State police. Yes. Yeah. I that's, mean, it's what are we supposed to do? That's we part all have of the to, we're prisoners in our own homes up there. And that's part of the problem about having such a part-time constable is we don't have, you know, we have two constables and they both are full-time with their own agencies, and some of them, at least last I knew, one of them was on mandatory OT on his job, so I know, so then it becomes the state police and whoever they have on duty is how long they get there and, and it's not a perfect system. We have talked about the select board, or the select board has talked about, you know, increasing policing, um, increasing that budget and trying to figure out, you know, how to do it and whether you contract with somebody so many hours a week or you hire a full-time officer or what, but still they're not gonna cover 24 seven, but. I mean, we definitely, like so like Teresa was saying, um, we do have some discussions coming up in regards to what are we going to do in our town f uh, yeah, when it comes to our policing. Um, because, you know, we were so fortunate for such a long period of time that we were able to share resources with neighboring towns. You know, we would have a constable that would be part-time in like two or three different towns. But now we don't have that. And it's, it's very hard to find anybody to do anything part-time, right? Because they could go do something full-time because there's so many full-time positions available. So it's definitely one thing that we do have. Um, we had sent out a questionnaire. I don't know, did you guys end up getting a questionnaire in regards to, um, they got mailed out with, well, they got mailed out when? Oh, the town report. Town, I'm sorry, it went town report. The town so report. it was in there where you could, um, you know, we had like six or seven topics on there. The yeah. yeah. Well, it, you know. um, but just trying to get feedback on what people would like to see, and um, so we will be exploring that um, prior to budget time because you know we got to figure out one way or another, you know, 
are we going to budget in a full-time person? Are we going to keep doing what we're doing or do something different? So, um, so we will do that. And you know, I'm, I'm sorry about the unfortunate situation that you're in. Um, one thing I'd like to do or, or hear back from you is, you know, let's give Therese the opportunity to uh, look into whatever um, violations that may be there. Um, and then, you know, if we don't meet again for two weeks, so I guess in fairness, if you give us two weeks to kind of look through this and see what we can do. And, you know, I, I know from, you know, doing things with like the, um, uh, the Board of Health and things like that is sometimes things that you and I would perceive as like really easy fixes have like a lot of red tape with it and take a lot of time. If you want to write your um, email address. You we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll try. If you want to write your email address on your iPhone. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. The town of health office here has already been in contact with Dan Mason. Yeah, yeah OK. Uh, I good. A copy of an email that you sent to him today. And, and the good thing I will say about Dan is Dan is an enforcement officer. I mean, he comes as a law enforcement agency agent carrying a gun. I mean, this is a, he is an officer. And um, he will, um, he's been excellent about looking into, thank you, any, about anything we've sent him so far. Um, not necessarily regarding your pride, but anything, you know, we've sent other way or well, other person. I would advocate that he bring other law enforcement, at least Oscar, with him. Okay. Because it is a dangerous situation up there. Okay. Well, definitely. Um, when did you get a hold of Dan? I didn't get a hold of Dan, I, but the health, town health officer did. Okay. I'll make a note to he call. Co him. He copied me, being the deputy. He, he copied me on email. Also, in regards to the property lines down there, does the town have any mechanism for checking to be sure that he's remaining within his his property lines. He's encroaching on. He's encroaching on like three different properties. I'd say four actually. Yep. So, uh, Kelly, um, one a neighbor reached out to Kelly, and she did uh, give them some information, like property tax maps and stuff. Right, so However, if your property or the adjoining properties are not surveyed, then it's you know there could be a little bit of margin for error just because um, once someone has an actual survey when they're doing the tax maps they put it on there but a neighbor did ask and also um, a gen the, a gen the gentleman in question also contacted Kelly and she explained that uh, to him that he was encroaching um, on other people's property. And that's the day he came home and beat up Sean. He the states on one piece of property twice. Oh. Actual I, I, survey pins yeah. From and as a side note, the other piece of property that is between his property and the, the complainant that you're referencing uh, currently is one of the ones that was just sold at tax sale. Uh, Bob, Bob Tabor, Tabor purchased it, yeah. so he's fully on that piece of property. Like, it's his right now. Okay. So. And currently, it's actually, it won't be Bob's. Right. For a full year. For well, I, I, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, and Joel's gonna have all this stuff built on it. Okay. So. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. I will ask the town attorney what we do about yeah. that. Um, it's really, it, it's unfortunately, it's, it's a really tough situation because it, it just, you, you would think that it'd be an easy solution. Yeah, no, but the it, cops explain. Like <laughs> again, like we don't have the enforcement to walk on someone's land, even if they're building illegal. They say they're putting up a, a huge building. I mean, we can't go in and, you know, there's nothing to say like you had to stop right now, you know, or or we're sending the constable or something that does, doesn't work that way. Other than we, we can penalize them for building without a permit. You know what I mean? But it. Uh, get fines and then they fail to pay the fines, does their property go up for tax sale? No. No. Wow. We go to environmental court. Yeah. Yeah, zoning is a whole different ball of wax. Yes, unfortunately. The, you know, it sounds awful, but my, my biggest recommendation would be to every time something happens, dial 911. Do not call Oscar. Do not yeah. wait for the constable. Dial 911 because the told us on Saturday night when they had to be sure. Called. Okay, yeah. you know, but the, they, they also told us they don't want to be up there every day too. So right. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If you call, they'll go, and um, it's it's mm -hmm. yeah. So I will talk to the town attorney about that tax sale property. My guess is he's going to tell me that because it's private property, um, we may not have any reach, but I'll find a, out. Another property that was almost for tax sale that is now, you know, yeah. going to be developed on our road, but there's a, between Joel's and that other almost tax sale property, there is a piece that, that's where Joel's building his septic and he's been cutting trees. So it's right. a really... And that'll be Dan, so I'll make sure I call him tomorrow morning. The, um, 
The other thing too uh, is that, and I'm sure the state police probably told you that about putting no trespassing signs or orders of no trespass or any of your legal um, opportunities available to you. Um, I mean, one, one issue that we've been enduring is that they, they this the, the dirt bike four wheeler um, trespassing spills over onto another piece of property, and again, because they're not present to post their land, we're all left to just deal we're with it. We're trying to get permission nothing, to post nothing that you can land, do, but so. even after it's posted, you know, you call in to say, oh, there's dirt bikes and four wheelers driving aggressively and trespassing on this land. How long does it take the cops to show up, and then they can't prove it? And right. we don't sure. want to go onto the land and get caught videoing him. Right. Then he's going to come beat us up. Right. You'd have to ask, yeah, permission from the current landowner about posting, or maybe if they know what's going on, they would come up and post it themselves. We're working on that. Yeah, you could get a hold of Kelly. She might have some contact information for them. Oh, we, if you don't. Yeah, we, we know. Oh, them, okay. So, yeah. All right. Because this started, this started last September. He closed on the property on August 25th, and there started to be problems within a week of him buying this piece of land mm -hmm. and you know so I, I called police for the first time on September 29th last year because mm. he was screaming at me in the woods it, I mean it's just horrible it is I'm so sorry you're going through that um, we will I will look through this I'll send you an email I'll get a hold of Dan um, <clears throat> and tell him your suggestions that he doesn't come alone and that um, and I'll talk to the town attorney about encroaching on the other land and and maybe they have some idea of something else that we can do that I'm not legally aware of. If so, I'll certainly let you know. Or if they have any suggestions for, for you all, we'll certainly pass them along. Well, thank yeah, you. I don't see the Chuck and John respond to Dan. Okay. Not yet. I, yeah, I have it was a, just I'll call. This him. morning he contacted me. Okay. Uh, and he's usually pretty quick about turnaround. Yeah. So we'll, and Dan will. You know, if there's septic violations, he'll, he'll, the state will take it seriously and we'll come in and deal with it. So, um, but I will definitely call him and I appreciate you thinking of his safety and I'll let him know you said that. Is it, is it rude if we leave now that we've spoken no. our no. piece? No, it's not at all. It's not. It's all to work. Okay. Sean, I hope that you feel better. Uh, thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Yes. So Lindley is on. Um, I just made sure okay. she's waving. I just made sure that she could hear us okay. Gotcha. All right. I actually have a meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, with. He asked about the right road ditching project. We got a grant for that, and um, we actually, I have a meeting tomorrow morning with Morgan and Rita and Alan May, the Better Roads guy. And um, so we haven't written the RFP yet. And Morgan's, you know, Rita and I had scoped it, so we need to get him up there and get it staked. And I can't remember the date of when the work has to be done by. But anyways, but we have a meeting at 9 a.m. tomorrow to talk about it, so. At the office. And just to go over the layout of the project. I just wanted to remember the big ditches from the bridge below my house up through to where my uncle was. <coughs> You're put the big ditches in there? We, yeah, I'd have to, honestly, it's been a while since I looked at the scope. Once I get it, um, the our, once I see the scope again, I'll make a note to email it to you. Because I, honestly, I'd, I'd hate to say something to you and not be right. So let me make a note to email you the scope. Um, yep, no, it's true. Yeah, I, I'm, because we were really, it was this side of Theron's, your side of Theron's, and kind of just the hill and, you know, where it's currently just going down into the river. And I feel like there was a culvert in there, but I, like I said, it's been a while, but I'll email you the scope. And also, the, one other thing, the roadside mowing, they, they did a gilly, they did a good job. They didn't do right road and they didn't do biome. The lady on biome requested that we didn't do biome this year. Um, one of them up near the top, I forget her name right this second. And we have tried to do some roads and not others because we didn't have the full budget to do all the roads. We've increased it a little bit from the prior year to this year. And, but um, I didn't remember that right was excluded, huh? I'd have to look, there's a spreadsheet. And um, so I will make sure that you guys are on the, for next year. But the lady lives on by him and I. Earl Marcel Ayer. That sounds right. 
And um, plus too, honestly, we were trying to find some places not to do so we could add places we hadn't done in years. So we didn't have the budget to do all mileage of roads, so. I think it's been a couple of years, two, three years since either one of those has been done. But no, he was up there. He did, he did buy them because she called um, upset about something. Year? Last year. Oh, last year. Yeah. But I'll, um, I'll make a note for um, hmm? Morgan about next year's. Maybe. About. Yep. Yeah. She, we, okay, I'll make sure. So, so we have um, the, uh, anyway, so I'll make a note. Add right road. Next year, roadside mowing. All right. You saw some back and forth up here. I'm, I'm going to make a request that you speak clearly, loudly, because the person taking the minutes is on Zoom. And so she needs to, you need to be picked up by the microphone and you need to be, to identify yourself, please. Okay. Any, any other public comment other than what's on the agenda this evening? Anybody else? I assume I'm on the agenda. Yes, you're next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hearing none, we will move on uh, to our first agenda item. So we'll just kind of back up and give a little overview to uh, anybody that wasn't here last time. Um, so, um, so we had started to talk about um, at the last meeting in regards to um, artificial flowers at the cemeteries and it, there was a, um, a decision that was made um, around Memorial Day to, to um, put some signage up um, requesting that artificial flowers not be brought to the cemeteries anymore. Um, as what what's been happening is, you know, we have we have one cemetery commissioner that oversees all the cemeteries. So, and the and the commissioner does way more than than his job, um, and you know he oversees several cemeteries a year. So this isn't like a, a day to day opportunity. You know, he's not on the ground, boots on the ground, even though he is often. Um, so um, so he had requested that that um, artificial flowers um, not be brought up to the cemeteries anymore um, as, as often they become um, very difficult to deal with in the maintenance end of things, either routine maintenance throughout the, throughout the year or at the end of the year or, you know, if there's, um, I don't know, a bad storm or something and, and the flowers get displaced. So, um, so he requested that. In, in the meantime, we'd also had looked and there is a far majority of cemeteries all across our area that don't allow artificial flowers at cemeteries anymore. So, so one thing that we had thought was when we put the signage up was that we weren't reinventing the wheel. This was something that a lot of cemeteries have gone to over the past X amount of years. Um, and we're trying to, you know, obviously it, it's a volunteer basically position. So, um, so that was the decision that was made. And, and then obviously, yep, we'll get time for everything. Um, so just for anybody that wasn't here, that was kind of our thing was to go from, um, right now our policy, our policy states, um, you know, that basically everything's allowed unless it's unsightly. Now, unsightly to Aaron is different than unsightly to me or, or Jean or anybody else, right? We all have a different definition on it. So right now it's kind of a very loose definition of what that means. Um, so I guess what we were going towards was not allowing, obviously, uh, artificial flowers, still allowing to, you know, to bring in real flowers, plant real flowers, in some cases different shrubs or, or other things uh, that there can be exceptions made um, as well. So one thing I just want to make sure tonight, because we talked about this two weeks ago, is, you know, it's obviously it's an emotional um, topic to talk about. You know, we want to celebrate um, the lives of loved ones that are no longer with us. And, but we also have to make sure that we're respectful. So. Um, the only way we're going to get through this is to have a constructive conversation. So constructive means we're all done with the finger pointing and the yelling and screaming. Now we have to come up, if we do want artificial flowers, now here's the opportunity to say, 
you know, we would really like to have the artificial flowers and this is how we can help or this is how we can m make this work because if we just go back and forth and point fingers tonight, we're not going to get anywhere or it's going to become a board's decision that maybe nobody likes. So I want to open it up to everybody, okay, but when we're speaking tonight, I want everybody to make sure that we're being super respectful to everybody and make sure that we're having a constructive conversation. Um, and then when, just like anything, when you, when you do speak, just make sure we know your name, say it a little loudly, or, or at least say it so I can hear it and I can repeat it. And then before anybody speaks a second time if needed, then I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to speak one time. Um, does that sound fair to everybody? Okay. So. Um, I'm trying to res have a response to Lindley, but it's giving me a hard time. So uh, we had Mr. we had Ray moved Sean. it from an appointment last uh, last meeting to this time to an agenda item because agenda item then we often can make decisions on do we want to change the the policy from right now it just reads unsightly to do we want to you know include things like art artificial flowers or do we want to rule that out completely so I guess that's kind of where we'd like to go so I will start with a hand in the back Mr. make sure oh Mr. Isham yeah I'll get you Mr. Isham number two. Oh. My yep. name is Elizabeth Bridge. Um, I was at the last meeting and you stated that you had done your homework and that several places in the area did not allow artificial flowers, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I have something I would like to present to the select board if you do not mind. Um, you, you can, yeah. around the area, and as you can see, Randolph, Sharon, Rochester, East Randolph, Sharon, Starkbridge, South Brooklyn, and Tunbridge, no signs, they all accept artificial flowers. Okay. So I'm not sure where the... So is this constructive? That's, I guess, is where I'm getting at, because this sounds pretty argumentative to me. No, this is constructive. What I'm saying is... Because you didn't give me the opportunity to bring all my my things that I looked okay, into. Okay, no, I'm, I'm giving you the so, opportunity to bring your stuff. I'm just presenting that we did go around, we did check okay. the cemeteries, and that there are no signs that say no artificial flowers, and they all have artificial flowers on them. Thank you. Are those the only towns? No. Veteran Cemetery doesn't. Did you get the Veteran Cemetery while you were around? The Veteran Cemetery allows them, but they do remove them within a week. Sharon. Okay, so what is your proposal on, so being that this is a constructive meeting tonight, so your proposal is obviously that you would like to see artificial flowers like in the cemetery. Artificial flowers, yes. So in, lieu, so in lieu of adding the artificial flowers, what are you or others willing to do to compensate for helping with the maintenance and the upkeep and um, keeping this? As the I stated at the last meeting, I would be more than willing to drive around to the Bethel cemeteries. Uh, my mom and I ride around all the time. I would be willing to go. I would be willing to check if any of them are tipped over, if there's anything that is scattered anywhere I can pick up. Um, we do it at my dad's here in the cemetery in Bethel. We take our own garbage bag, we put our own flowers in, and we take them home and dispose of them. Okay, thank you. Bucky. Okay. First of all, I just want to comment that many years ago there was a basketball backboard on that wall and one on this wall. And I was coaching the Wickham boys and girls basketball. And this is where we played the game. And I'm just impressed. I may have been in here once, but I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I'll try to keep this brief. And I've got notes so I can stay on topic. Thank you for giving me the time. And I thank my grandson for bringing me because I don't drive anymore. <laughs> we purchased our cemetery lot in late 1970s. At that time, I was presented with rules and regulations of the cemetery dated Bethel, 1975, and it says, I gotta put on my glasses, yeah, excuse me. Uh, 
Uh, the following rules and regulations for town cemeteries are based on authority granted the select men acting as commissioners of said cemeteries under section 4044 of the revised laws of Vermont, 1947 edition. And then it goes on, there's a lot of stuff in here, I won't go into that. Commissioners, the duly elected select men of the town of Bethel. Sexton, the appointed representative of the commissioners, commonly known as the cemetery foreman. And then it tells about the lots and the prices and everything. And then uh, item two in section three, it says, all artificial flowers placed on lots in any town cemetery shall be removed by July 10th annually. I don't know why it was July 10th, but it is. So anyway, that's from the, that's 50 years ago, almost 50 years ago that I was given that. I would expect there have been a lot of revisions to this uh, as the years have gone on. I assume that the select board is still uh, acting as the commissioners, and I am assuming that you were the ones who made the decision of no artificial flowers, and the former carried those out or the sexton. Anyway, our daughter died in 1981, our granddaughter a few years later. Since then, we've always put on real flowers in front of our stone, except this year. This year, things are different. Because of health conditions, and I've already mentioned I do not drive anymore, we had to change our plans. So we decided to place some artificial, two artificial sprays on the uh, cemetery lot. My daughter-in-law took me down and we placed the sprays. There was another person in the cemetery at that time and said, uh, did you realize that you can't use those artificial flowers? And no, I guess I didn't see the sign. So we picked up the artificial flowers. I said a short, silent prayer, thanking God for the birth, for the lives of our granddaughter and daughter. And I, uh, we left the cemetery. When I got home. Uh, I called Therese after I'd had a chance to get my thoughts in mind, and Therese was very polite, and uh, she listened to my frustration, and uh, she also indicated that there'd been some other, I don't know how many, uh, people that had uh, expressed their frustration. Every year, since we were married, we travel up north to the Northeast Kingdom. My wife's parents and relatives are buried in the Peachum and Danville cemeteries. Then we go over to Concord, where my parents and relatives are buried, and also Lunenburg. So there's four cemeteries. None of them have any law that I know of banning artificial flowers. Uh, so I called the town manager, as I said, uh, the cemetery, which really looks pretty nice after Memorial Day, with the flowers, artificial and real, the veterans' flags, the firemen's flags. This year, except for those flags and the monuments, the cemetery looked like a desert. You could look around and see an occasional geranium or some petunias, 
but they were few and far between. And it was just, it was sickening to me. That's why I, I, I guess I got upset. Uh, I tried not to be when I took call to Reese. So uh, here is the end of my dissertation. If the artificial flowers are such a big problem, perhaps the fellow who mows that you pay to mow the cemetery, or even a student, could be paid at the end of the summer to clean up the cemetery. Perhaps the money that was spent on those signs could have been used to pay for that this year. I, I don't know. Maybe we need to have a GoFundMe account or something. But I am asking the select board to please reconsider this decision. Amen. Thank you. Yes. I don't think I can say it any better than that gentleman right there. Mm -hmm. For years, I have put flowers on my mom and dad's Barbara Hart. And I have hearing loss. I'm going to Barbara ask. Hart. Thank you. And for years, I have put flowers on my mom and dad's. And now my husband is there, I put them on his, and my relatives are there. Um, this year, I put them on my mom and dad's and they were taken off. Um, I, I can't say it any better than that gentleman right there. The cemetery really looked bad Memorial Day. There was no color flow to it. And other people noticed it too. And I think the artificial flowers, at least until September, are not faded. They stay pretty well until September. And you can always just post it that, that anyone that puts them on there has to have them off by September. And I'm sure that if you post it year round, the people would see it. Yeah, I think hit it on the head there, you know, from, what was it, 1974? Your card? 1975. Five. So, and, and not with, uh, this board hadn't formally made any changes to the policy, but there, the last one was, when was that one that you showed us? It was 2000. Uh, there was a, there was a, we'll call it a most recent 2000. policy adjustment, but it wasn't like recent within the year. It was like 2004 uh, or something. This one says amended in. Uh, May or March 8, 2010. 2010. Yeah. So 2010, and, and, and so the most one. recent one reads, is one. there a time frame on the? No. So, so the most recent one, Bucky and, and Barbara just says, um, the most recent one just says that, um, that everything will be removed from cemetery property whenever it becomes unsightly. So we've gone from 1975 of saying that you had a period of time, right? I think you said July 10th or something like that. To you know, I'm I'm sure there was 10 other revisions over the years that either stuck or didn't stick. But to now, and I think where we're at is so Cecil is our. I mean, even though we're kind of the the board of everything, right? Um, Cecil is the one that um, has been appointed to do the oversight of the cemeteries that that we have in Bethel. But he's got to carry, excuse me, carry out your, I mean, he, he's just a, a sexton. Yeah, he just goes by, yeah, he goes by whatever the policy is. Oh, and, oh. And, I, and I will say that he, he goes above and beyond what his duties are. You know, it's, it's very, it's, it's almost a volunteer position, right? Um, he gets a, a small stipend a year, um, but you know, he does everything from digging plots to, to, to doing a lot of upkeep that really has nothing to do with what his job title is. So I think what we're trying to do is get a, a healthy balance between the way the policy reads right now is from whenever you want to put them out until whenever anybody wants to collect them. So, and I think what happens to, to Cecil, and feel free to 
um, say anything, Cecil, is it, it becomes overwhelming when things are not um, maybe maintained in the proper time frame. So, it, it, you know, it, it, I'm sure you're very responsible if you go up and, I, I don't know, make it up. Maybe at the end of September you come and, and look at the grave site and make sure that, you know, the upkeep and stuff has been done. But there are plenty of people that don't do anything. And then it just becomes... The other thing is there are a lot of people that have parents or family buried in those cemeteries who don't live anywhere near, like me, going to conquer them and doing it. Mm. It's a hundred miles. Right. I can't go up and water in the summer because most cemeteries are right up in the hot sun. Yeah, true. And uh, put water on the flowers. So up there we use artificial. Mm -hmm. But this is the first year we've used them on our lot. And uh, it's. And it, it seems like. Kind of that's all I can do or don't put flowers on. Right. And, and I'll say on the town's end of things is we didn't feel like we were we're overstepping in a manner of that we've done some homework and that there are a lot of places that don't accept um, either are their official flowers or have a very strict time on when you can have them or not have them. So I guess when we decided to put the signs out, we didn't, we weren't prepared, you know, enough, uh, done, done enough homework to see what, how that was going to affect everybody. Um, but it, it sounds like, you know, right now that the over, Overwhelming, unless there's anybody in support of of not going with the artificial flowers. It seems like like there's an overwhelming support for some artificial flowers for a period of time, like Bucky was saying, you know, or or like Barbara was saying at the end. Um, Joanne Wood raised her hand in the back. Yeah, Joanne. Um, my name is Joanne Wood. Um, I wasn't at the meeting two weeks ago, but I did read the letter to the editor. I watched the ortho recording of the meeting last night to familiarize myself with this um, problem that we're facing. Um, my husband is buried up at the Fairview Cemetery. Uh, so, you know, one of the things I think, and I, I appreciate how Chris stated it, just that we are all dealing, working from a place of respect for one another's opinion about the cemeteries. Um, I, my thoughts go from, uh, you know, I, when I visit my in-laws up at the Veterans Cemetery where, according to what I've researched, re artificial flowers are not allowed. Some people might see that as very stark and bleak. So others find it very peaceful and calm. Likewise, in a cemetery that's full of flowers, uh, artificial flowers, real flowers, some people see that as a, a loving, joyous tribute to their loved ones, and others see it as too busy and complicated. So we all are respectful of how we, how we want to honor our loved ones who are buried in these cemeteries. So when I was thinking about this, I, I kind of put that aside. Because I, I think the issue that really is facing the town and facing our cemetery commissioner is an overwhelming amount of work that has to be done to maintain these five cemeteries. Um, and having to um, you know, take care of either removing flowers or mowing around them or it, it, I, it just does not, to me, seem to be sustainable for given, you know, a, a five or six hundred dollar stipend for the year and all the other duties that are required of the cemetery commissioner. And it just seems to me, we, we how are we going to, how are we going to keep that sustainable in the future? Uh, you know, people, people move on, people change, we get new select men and women, we get new cemetery commissioners, and you know, I, we're fortunate right now, I think, to have someone who is taking very good care of our cemeteries, but I think we're asking too much if it also includes kind of uh, managing artificial flowers. The other thing that I just want to mention, because I didn't hear any of it 
um, last meeting, and I think it is something that we all have to think about, is um, artificial flower, artificial plastic flowers are not good for our environment. Those flowers, whether they're at the cemetery or in a landfill, are going to be hanging around for decades to come. Long after all of us are gone, they're still going to be around in some form. And I think that we can adopt a policy that is respectful also of the environment and the kind of world we're going to leave for our children and grandchildren. And, and for that reason, I, I kind of support the change that has been proposed. I was gratified to hear uh, Therese's apology for how it was implemented. And certainly, there could have been better communication, better notice, better involvement. And I, I think her, her words to the meeting two weeks ago were, were heartfelt and sincere. And, um, um, I, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. And, and I'll, and Barbara, if, I'm just going to make sure that everybody gets, gets one turn before we hit to the second one, so. Judith Berland. Cecil is my partner, just so you, everybody knows that. He is called three or four times every week, sometimes three or four times in a day. He goes out of his way to talk to people, to try to help them. We have people calling from out of state looking for gravestones. So for him to stop whatever he's doing and run to Cherry Hill and find someone's gravestone that he maybe passed, maybe didn't, it's a lot of time, plus all the other things he's doing. And for people to expect him to go and pick up artificial flowers when they're blown all over the place, and I know everybody has good intentions of going and picking them up, but it doesn't happen. They're left in the cemetery. Some people pick them up, some people don't. The signs, you know, they're saying, you're saying to post a sign saying by a certain date the flowers should be picked up. You posted signs saying no artificial flowers. How many people read those signs? They don't read the signs. They just do what they've always done. And it's also an environmental thing. Why, you know, why put more artificial flowers in the landfill? I remember a, quite a few years ago, I went and helped him pick up the cemetery in the fall, and I was actually appalled. People had thrown their artificial flowers by a tree, in the bushes, over the bank, all over the place. The barrels were overflowing. I mean, why sh for me, why should the town be responsible for taking care of artificial flowers if that's what you want to put on, the, on someone's grave? And I understand wanting to put flowers on someone's grave. I'm fortunate my brother in Massachusetts takes care of our family grave. And he puts real flowers, his son helps him, and we all contribute to the cost. You know, but we are limited. So, you know, we have to put a cost on how much we can spend. But to me, I thought Memorial Day weekend, the cemetery looked very nice because there wasn't old artificial flowers all over the place. New flags were put up. The old ragged ones were taken down which hadn't been done in quite a few years. I just thought it looked nice. Is there anybody that hasn't had the opportunity to speak one time? Julia Marshall, I have to agree with what she's saying. I visit the cemetery often. 
really often. I, practically every week I'm in the cemetery, either up on Christian Hill or one where my parents are in Fairfield. I have seen flowers up there that I swear are three years old. I've seen the flowers thrown over the bank. Not just one bank, but all along the bank. Um, I'm more concerned, I mean, I'm okay with somebody putting them plastic flowers up there if that's what you want to honor your loved one with. I am okay with that. I think they have to be really close to the stone. I don't believe that our um, uh, cemetery commissioner should have to pick them up. I don't believe that our mower should have to go around and move them. Sometimes they're on the grave, sometimes they're four feet from the stone. That becomes a problem for, the, for our um, mower. I thought our cemetery looked good Memorial Day. Um, I will don't say that I think yearly our American flags are changed out. They've always been changed out, um, so they always look good. Um, I'm more concerned with the stones that are being knocked over in our cemetery. Dirty stones, I mean just filthy. Putting, putting the flowers up there and your stones dusty and dirty, mold and mildew on them. I think that, uh, that's how I, uh, I don't put flowers on my parents. Um, I don't put them on my grandparents or my aunts and uncles, but I try to make sure the stone is upright and clean. But I'm against the flowers, I guess. <clears throat> okay. Yes, Janice. Yes. Uh, I had called Therese the day after the last meeting, after I had spoken to Barbara, and Barbara said that um, what we had spoken about was in agreement. What the ladies would like would be able to put artificial flowers from Memorial Day or flags, however they want to honor their dearly departed, um, and then have them there until Labor Day. They would like a week after Labor Day to come and pick them up. Um, I think that is more than fair. And I also agree with this gentleman over here that at the end of the season, if there are people that come to visit their grandparents and they leave artificial flowers, somebody should be hired to help Cecil um, to pick up the artificial flowers. But I don't think that the senior ladies of Bethel should be denied the right to leave artificial flowers as a memento to the memory of their relatives. And that's what I said to Therese. And okay. Barbara agreed. Put it in the packet so they did know okay. what you said. Good, so thank you. <laughs> yes. Robert Geichel. <clears throat> I have a my mom and dad, a brother and a son up there. And since we've been back here in Bethel since 2003, uh, every year my wife and I, more, uh, more so her, go up and put real flowers. We weed, we put mulch, we put them even not just on the headstone, but all the mark. And our relatives that are not around here, uh, they live in other states. But each and every year, we're getting older. <clears throat> we're 81 years old. Now we just do the main headstone, just ours. And my wife has a serious bad back. You have to go up and water them and stuff. And we're pretty soon in the Bucky stage where we'll consider artificial flowers. <clears throat> a few years ago, I thought it was uh, not 2010, even less than that, we had the same discussion. And they were uh, not going to allow them. And I remember Bert Dean and some others came down and I supported her. And we came with a compromise. Instead, all year long, there was a certain date that you could start them and a certain date that you had to and I kind of favor that, uh, and I'm willing to help. I think we can get volunteers, we can get community service from people, and just to, instead of having a commission to do it, just have a work day uh, at the end of the year to go pick them up. Uh, I went up to cemetery today. It's absolutely beautiful, well cared for, looks nice. Uh, I did notice on the way out, Cecil, that it's closing in. Uh, on the road, it's hard to get down there without the trees and brush uh, hitting, but he takes care of that periodically. <clears throat> but I really, uh, I, I agree with the environmental things, but we can't serve, uh, solve all the world's problems here. 
You see the two plastic jugs up there? I mean, we all do that, uh, not intentionally. But uh, let's work together and try to compromise and, uh, to, and keep the cemetery clean. And that is another thing, the lady that mentioned the stones. The stones look horrible. And I noticed some of our family stones that we're going to have to pay to uh, have it done. Uh, my son and I, when they come to visit, my sons, we go up and we found a solution that we could do it ourselves and brush. But some of the family, they're really bad. But I strongly support being able to uh, show love to our departed uh, and try to work it out and, and make it work. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, now that we've had everybody had one chance, does anybody on the board have any comments at this time? Or Lindley's remotely, so if Lindley has comments or anybody else? Well, I think it was, it was enlightening to me to see, I don't know if you folks have looked in the select board packets, but we got a two-page listing of all the responsibilities that Cecil takes part in. Um, up there at the cem at five cemeteries, and it's it's pretty impressive. I, I was uh, I did not realize that there were so many things that he was involved in, and we've been working hard to try to change the stipend policies and, and some of those things here in town because they're not just not adequate to cover the amount of time that folks are putting in on some of these uh, the responsibilities. Um, I don't think there's any denying that uh, Cecil's got his hands full. <laughs> I, I'm very happy to hear calm discussion and valid points and good, not arguments, but good, you know, discussion. Because I think, you know, we're seeing that there's a trend towards trying to work out some kind of compromise. And that's what we're here for. We're not here to yell or scream, we're here to try to come up with a policy that everybody can live with. So I appreciate everybody's comments, very important. This is the biggest crowd I think I've ever seen at a select board meeting. This is incredible, and I've only been five years, six years, whatever, but it's the biggest crowd I've ever seen, and it's, it's impressive. And people really care enough. Well, it's a little bit me. Whatever, but it's impressive to see that people care enough to come out and uh, comment. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm Brian Wright. Uh, unfortunately, these people are, are a minority. They take care of their lots very well, but 99% of them don't. And you can say, you know, you can have committees to go check these, but you, you almost have to do it on a twice a week basis. To, you know, because the wind blows and, the, and the, these people mow, and you're lucky you get somebody that can mow, that will the blow, blow in the mow. And they're not going to, you know, they can't spend the time to pick these up. And Robert's comment, we can't solve all the problems, but we've got to start somewhere with the environment, with the plastic. You don't need plastic bag and shot anymore, and you're moving with the plastic straw. We've got to start somewhere and go out of the park. I mean, I just want to make sure that I'm hearing the the argument through. I mean, I think I think most of Cecil's argument is just like what Paul said: is the the amount of responsibility that he has, that, or that he does that he shouldn't have to do, is overwhelming. So how do we how do we lessen the burden, still get the value out of Cecil, but lessen the burden on you know on a lot of a lot of the maintenance at the cemeteries. So, um, and it, you know, maybe whenever the, the last bylaws were changed for the cemeteries, it sounded like it kind of just went to a, over the years from what Bucky was saying, as there was a time, and now all of a sudden there is no time. And now it sounds like, you know, like Joanne and others have talked about is that there's been long periods of people not wanting to do maintenance in the cemetery so that then it becomes you know, cumbersome to one individual to do it. So, I mean, I guess what I would offer up, if if it sounds, you know, is, and I don't know, being that we're kind of, we're at July already, so would this year count or should we do it through next year? But 
you know, what about picking a date that we can live with um, and giving it a trial run of, well, I'll make it up, I'm just throwing something out there. So what if we said, you know, between, between Memorial Day and Labor Day weekend that we would allow artificial flowers in the cemeteries and pick a weekend after Labor Day that maybe kind of like we do Green Up Day, like, okay, we're gonna have cemetery Green Up Day and it's gonna be the weekend after Labor Day where hopefully we can have enough gathered at different cemeteries to, to, to overdo the burden and go out together and pick them up and, and give it a trial run. Now, let's, let's, I'm just gonna get, let's say we do it, let's say we do it and nobody shows up, but, you know, then maybe we have to go back to the board and, and look at things, but yes, it's so. eight years ago, it didn't work then and it won't work now. What did you do eight years ago? We tried it eight years ago, it didn't work then and it won't work now. They were supposed to. That's why we're here now. What was, it didn't. What was, was that the same time frame tried eight years ago? I don't remember when it was, but it was. It was Memorial Day and it would be taken off September. And the right. flowers are right there the next spring. Was, excuse me, Cecil, was there a volunteer group at the, to be. At the end of the been, summer? I don't remember any volunteers ever going and cleaning them all up. I didn't say you didn't take care of your grave, you do. Yeah, I do. And Barbara probably does. I don't keep track of how where the graves are. Yeah. Yeah. But they were supposed to pick up all the flowers, not just one or two graves. It never and, worked. And it opens up things like what Brian had said, you know, it, the, the individuals that are in the room are are, are the minority that do care for, you know, the, the we'll call daily maintenance of of their loved ones, and you know it's others that unfortunately are the the ones that we're talking about here, right? Um, and and I'm sure, just like Cecil said, I, I'm sure sitting here that eight years ago we probably did come up with the same thing, right? And did it work for a year and then it didn't happen? I don't know, but I'm just trying to think what what can we do to one take the burden off Cecil, two allow loved ones to, especially in, you know, I hear the case of getting to the point of can't plant real flowers, artificial flowers are our are, are way to still remember that, um, you know, trying to meet in the middle of, of that. Um, so, well, um, so Elizabeth, well, I'll go back to you. Yes. Um I had volunteered last week, and I have a very large family that would be more than willing to help pick up the cemetery. We do our own. We have walked around and picked up some and placed them back on the stones. I am a person, as you can ask anybody that knows me, if there's a flag that's bent over, I will purposely walk over and straighten it out. I have no problem, and I'm sure my family won't if I ask them to go up and help maintain this this whole situation with the artificial flowers. Yes. Judith Berlin. Um, I have a suggestion, maybe for the people that can't do get down and plant flowers. Maybe you could see if there's uh, some school program that might be willing to help plant flowers, because usually you're planting them before Memorial Day or in the spring. Um, I think that might be an option. And then you wouldn't have to worry about the, the, the artificial flowers blowing all over the place. Um, if we're gonna look for volunteers to do something, let's look for volunteers to do something that, you know, it's it's gonna be real flowers that are gonna eventually die and go into the ground, not artificial flowers that are gonna, gonna be there or gonna be in the landfill. Who's gonna water them? Maybe we can, you can find somebody to do that. <laughs> Joanne Marshall. Um, I think you've got the right idea, Chris. I think maybe we do a trial. Okay. I was going to say that. Do from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And then put something in the paper or on your Facebook page. Hey, this Saturday we're going to do a cleanup. Yes. I think we ought to at least try that. I'm not a fan of the plastic flowers, but um, 
I think that we do have people here that say they'll be out there picking them up. I know that if there was a date, my husband and I would be out there. I think if we got Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts involved, we probably could get the cemetery picked up very quickly. But I think we have to follow through and make sure those things happen. The next thing nowadays is all the meetings of videotape. So yeah. now, now we know when people say that they're going to do something, got to show up. Because we're going to be like, oh, we're just going to play this video. And that's you right there. No. So how, how about the day-to-day -day maintenance, though? I mean, the week to week, the, you know, we have a, a storm came through on Saturday and half the flowers are blown off to where they should be and stuff. Who's going to go up after that storm? How are we going to deal with that type of situation? The person that mows is going to take care of those. And so then our cost for that is going to go up. I don't personally see them blowing around as much if somebody sticks them in the ground and the car sticks out. So, um, and I think that sounds like there's a bunch of us up there. Maybe we pick them up and, if they're blowing around. Um, but I guess we probably should do a trial period for these people that I'll want take, to do it. And I'll take two as more. long as they put them close to their stones, not five feet away, too. Okay, I'll get Elizabeth and then. Well, two, three. Brian and then Joanne. How's that? See, see so seeding is not going to work. If you can try it for Memorial Day to Labor Day. It's just not going to work. See, so seeding, he's the he's guy that runs it for us. How about incorporating something with uh, Green Up Day, um, Bulb Planting Day? Let's incorporate that. Anybody in the cemetery that aren't able to put, that put plastic flowers, we could, we could, you know, have volunteers to plant bulbs that come up every year. Just about. So, so my, I'm Elizabeth Bridge. My suggestion would be that um, my family, especially, go up quite often. At least every other week or once a month, we go up. My dad's up there. My sister-in-law's up there. Uh, my aunts and uncles are up there. Um, and we had thought about putting a shepherd hook up, where we can actually put artificial plants over the stones. They're not in the ground. It would be behind the stone where no one is going to have to worry about weed whacking or anything because you should be able to weed whack around it. We do all the time. I'm not saying I don't want to be able to put artificial flowers up there because all honesty I do. It's in remembrance of my family. It hurt me very badly to know that we were not allowed to do that this year. I would be, and as I said, my family would be more than willing to do a green up day. Um, we are up there, like I said, at least every other week, once a month. Um, we have no problem with walking the cemeteries. We have no problem with picking up flowers and stuff that are scattered. And if a storm comes along, as the lady in the front row said, if you have put your artificial flowers in the ground correctly, they are not going to blow all over the place. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify, are you suggesting, I'm just trying to get it for the, correct for the minutes, um, Elizabeth, are you suggesting that that's what the select board tells people, is that everyone has to install a shepherd's hook to put their artificial yeah, plants on? what I'm saying is we would be willing to, okay. yes, because okay. we do have them. My son is buried in Royalton. Uh, we do have a shepherd's hook there, but as you know, according to the pictures, we are allowed to put artificial flowers up. Okay. Um, there has never been an issue about it. Um, you know, All right. we have family here, there, and everywhere, and most every place that we have them are allowed to put artificial flowers in. All right, I just wanted to clarify for Thank that you. to make sure. Thank you. And yes, Joanne. Uh, Joanne, would if um, if the board adopts that, I I would I would suggest that the, the the wording of allowing flowers from Memorial Day to Labor Day, it, it's can. Having that happen is contingent upon a successful cleanup the week after Memorial Day, if I'm hearing this correctly. And there's a lot of people that are saying they'll volunteer, they may have family that will come, and that, that's wonderful. But I think the, somehow that has to be incorporated into this new policy. That the reason we're allowing artificial flowers is because we've been 
We are hearing guarantees that they will be taken care of and will not fall onto the cemetery commissioner's lap. And, and for that reason, I think you have to define what is a successful cleanup of, of that, of, of all the cemeteries. The five cemeteries have to be cleaned up. And, and how is that going to be defined? Who is going to evaluate if it's successful? So that you've determined for the following year, okay, we could do this again. It worked. It's great. Or this didn't work. We have to go back to a drawing board because it didn't, even with the best of intentions. So I'm just offering that as things to consider if you have that policy for Memorial Day through Labor Day. Thank you. So I think what I'll do now is um, just close, close comments to the public and that way the board can deliberate on what we feel at this point would be the best way to go forward with this. Um, I mean, it's, it sounds like for the most part that there's two options on the table. One is, is no artificial flowers at any time. And the second one is right now is to have artificial, artificial flowers for a period of time with a, a, a green up day at, at the end of that and contingent upon how well that green up day goes that being allowed for the next year or the year after that. Um, I just wanted to let you know we received this, Kelly forwarded to me this morning, a message, an email from a John Ennis, and he said, this problem can easily be solved. At my parents' cemetery in Missouri, all flowers, plastic or real, cannot be on the ground. I use a Jacob's hook and a hanging basket right next to the stone. It works well. I just wanted to make sure we, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that John's message got. Okay, so I guess at this point, what, what's the board feel? Uh, Lindley's on, yep, there you are, couldn't find you. Uh, Lindley's there, so what, what's the board's opinion at this point? First of all, I want to thank people for bringing up the cemetery policy, <laughs> because I think that it needs, there are some things in it that need some attention. Um, and we can get into that, or I can share some other issues, but. And I also would ask, is there the possibility of forming a quote, like the historical committee? But it's a, it's a cemetery beautification <laughs> committee or something that would meet uh, periodically through the summer uh, that wouldn't depend on one individual or family but could become uh, an organization that uh, visited after storms, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that may be something that we want to consider after a period of trial, if I think the only thing I just have concerns with, you know, when I ever hear the word committee or or focus group or whatever, is who who's on that, right? I mean, we have a lot of committees that, I mean, I think in a perfect world that would be great. I mean, I just wonder like who would be on that committee and how long would people be on that committee for? Like, it may be traction for a year or two and then, then like Cecil then says back to normal, you know, then, then what happens at that point? That's, that's part of yeah. my concern with one or two families right. saying we'll volunteer, et cetera. That's wonderful, uh, but at some point that family is not going to be able to continue doing that. And it doesn't, answer the question of what happens on a week by week or every other week kind of basis mm -hmm. uh, when we have storms come in and, and all kinds of stuff can happen. As, as to the concern I have, I'm just trying to organize the volunteer piece of it. If Let me do everything. You don't have to if you don't want to, but to see yeah, you there. That's okay. Um, 
I really appreciate everybody's um, attendance. I wish I could be there to see it in person, but I could at least hear you all, which was great. Um, no, it's been, I have not actually found myself to come to a, a really strong conclusion even over the last two weeks and listening to the different arguments and, you know, reading people's sentiments and all of that. It's been a really, I don't think it's an, a straightforward yes or no, this or that type of thing. And I think that I have a, a very similar concern that I've heard other other folks vocalize. And some of that is echoing Cecil saying, we've tried this before and it didn't work. Um, but also the the volunteer piece. I all of that said, I'm fully on board to try. And I liked Chris's um, compromise that he proposed. I think that that's a good way to do it. I think even given that it would be a trial thing and we're sort of starting mid season, I would really suggest we say our trial period is at least this year and next year, if not, you know, give it a year or two. Um, but I do think that the volunteer piece is something that we have to kind of keep tabs on. And that what I don't want to see is that the responsibility after two years just keeps falling back to the commissioner um, and that, you know, five years from now, we're back here having a very similar discussion. Um, and I think that somewhat would then land to the select board to keep tabs on this, check in with the commissioner, check in, you know, with other members of the town who we know, M many of you are here tonight, um, but just to really check in and say, is this working? What isn't working about it and reassess at that point. So I would, I guess the motion that I would make, and if somebody wants to second it, we can. If not, we can go back to the table. Um, the motion I'm willing to make is to allow artificial flowers from the dates of Memorial Day to Labor Day. And this would be only contingent upon that we have a mandatory cemetery cleanup or green up day that would take place the first Saturday after Labor Day. And, and that the success would be evaluated by the cemetery commissioner for, the success would be evaluated by the cemetery commissioner. Um, first weekend after Labor Day, mandatory cleanup. Yeah. So I guess that would be my mo motion. All right. Allow our fish flowers Memorial Day, Labor Day, mandatory cleanup first weekend after Labor Day. Yeah. Or I just put the first Saturday, but I, okay. I mean, if you okay. put weekend, then does you know? Yeah. I don't know, Saturday. No, Saturday's specific... fine. Yeah. No, I just wasn't sure. Saturdays Saturday. work better, or Sundays work better for people. Doesn't make any difference to me. Either or. I'm not gonna You're just going to make Aaron go do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll rally the troops. <laughs> so I mean, the first Saturday. I don't know. Usually Saturday, people are more out doing some working pieces than Sundays. But mm. I mean, I. But but I would say that you know if if it doesn't work, then we're you know probably getting towards you know if we go up there and nobody shows up and you know. We're burdening, you know, by having a lot of cleanup out there for one person. Then I, you know, I think the next solution is to go, you know, with no. Um, so I, I guess that's the motion that I'm willing to make. Then people will show up if they don't. Put it in the paper or where? I guess we have the motion and then discuss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. So I would second the motion. But I would also say that there are several things that we have to also put in there, stipulating how the flowers need to be placed, where they need to be placed, how they need to be attached. Um, and also we still have to deal with the, you know, somebody every week or every other week checking to see if they're blown over or whatever, because uh, that, that still needs to happen. And I don't think it's right for, you know, Cecil's got enough on his hands to go around to five different cemeteries. Uh, Can I say check it on that. Uh, um. My name is Vivian Caswell. My husband has been in that cemetery for 32 years. I have put silk flowers on his grave every year. And I have gone on there several times. I have not found one of the flowers blown over anywhere on that grave. 
You keep telling us they're blowing over. Okay. So hold on. So the board's deliberating right now. So we closed off the public comment. Yes. And remember, like we had talked about, you know, that people in this room are not, are not the issue that's putting all the burden on Cecil, right? I mean, you guys are very responsible um, with your loved ones and their in their sites. It's 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 how how do we, you know, individuals that travel up, extended family or friends that travel up from wherever to play something in Memorial Day that never come back again, right? So what do, how do we take care of that? Because it's not fair to Cecil to have to do that. Um, so I, I think that's kind of where, and then Paul was kind of looking at, kind of similar to what Elizabeth had said about where they can be placed. about an attachment that potentially that could be put on the headstone that allows for it to be more secured, but also easier for maintenance. Right. So Paul, just want to clarify that. So you said um, you feel like the you should be more specific about where they can be placed. How they're attached, you know, more secured, um, so that they don't. What, what was the name of it? A shepherd's hook. Shepherd's or, hook. Or or what? Are, yeah, are they, uh, hooks they? Yeah. Too. Yeah. And oh, the gentleman yeah. from Missouri called it a something. Are they pretty hooks. readily available and easy yeah. to get and affordable yeah. and? Yeah. yeah, you can get them at the hardware stores yeah. and anywhere. Mm -hmm. Just a wrought iron. Book. I two in the yeah. shed that my wife used to put flowers in that we took up north, and they go over the stone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some of them, yeah, sounds like they fit on the stone, and some are just a piece of raw iron with a little hook, so you could hang like a hanging plant or something on it. Can I also make another question? I'm sorry. Um, if they take a like a stake, you can get the hooks to put on them. They look just as nice. Um, they can be also be put up close to the stone, so they come up behind it, and then you can still attach the, the flowers to them. Yeah, there are different sizes. So we're talking about getting very specific about exactly what you can do with flowers at headstones. This is what we're going to be putting in as part of the policy. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Well, I don't know. I mean, my proposal was to go, you know, secure the the artificial flowers the way, you know, I guess they're done now with with knowing that there was going to be responsibility up there that if Cecil comes down to us or if Cecil comes to Therese yeah. in July and says, hey, I got a bunch of artificial flowers, you know, displaced, then... I will then, then maybe we throw something on Facebook that we're going to go out oh. <laughs> next weekend and go clean up the cemetery, you know? I mean, we just, mm. so what happens with, with that? Well, I know? think what happens is the ones that were picked up and some of the ones that were returned to, you know, they're at the town office, some of them were, were just loose. We're just, I um, actually have a couple of that were bouquets that had like, masking tape holding other things to them and they were left there. They weren't secured properly in the ground like you know Elizabeth is saying. So I, I actually agree with Paul that you should be more specific because right. some of the things that were that were there, the reason they're blowing around is they're not attached. So people are just laying them there. So I do think that if you're going to allow this trial for just this I think you should just try it for this year. I don't but um, that's just my personal opinion. But you should um, be very specific about, you know, making sure that they're properly attached, that they're near the stone, so that people that they can be mowed around and trimmed around and and taken care of. Um, so I think that okay. would. So I think Paul's right. It would help just because I've looked at all the stuff that we've had that's been left. Um, I, some of them, there was only one that actually fit over the headstone that was metal. The rest of them, I don't know how they were hooked down. Mm. Okay. Um. I just, excuse me. I think um, communication is very important in this situation. And then after Labor Day, I think that we should communicate to the community that there will be a cleanup day. 
make sure that everybody knows it. So people who would like to participate instead of just one family doing it or just a few families, give people the opportunity to do it. But it has to be communicated. I think you're right about that. Sure. And I'm not sure we can advertise okay. it. Similar to like what we do for Green yeah. Up Day and add in the paper, Facebook, you know, front porch. I'm sure we can work with Cecil to find a time that you know between I don't know you know between the hours of I don't know 10 and noon or something on this day where, where everybody's going to get together and do it. All right, so let's see. But when we get down to securing it, I mean, do we get as nitty gritty as saying this or that, or just something that needs to be secured within? I think it has to be contained Maybe. a foot of the stone or something. I mean, how, how I mean, the flowers have to be contained uh, in a container that has material in it that will will support the flowers. We can do yeah. two more hours of yep. hashing over what what we're going to, how we're going to support them, where we're going to support them. I think we should. Uh, whoever wants to make these decisions, talk about it for a couple hours, put it together, and my, I'll look at it then. No. Right now, I don't think I can make a decision with all the different options that we're talking about. No, no, we're not, I don't think we're going to do anything solid tonight. I think we need to put together a couple of drafts and... and At least one to say, okay, this is what we're going to allow, this is what we're going to allow, talking about. this is how we're going to allow. I mean, I could work, I could take, obviously we have all the notes, we know what everybody wants, we could take that, I could talk to Cecil about his expertise with dealing with the stones as to where they should be placed, how they should be. He could give some good advice on if artificial flowers are going to be allowed, how do they not affect the mowers and operators and himself. Um, We're not so. going to get that done. Right. Okay. Or, or why couldn't we just put in, in a motion, you know, talking about the placement and attachment of the artificial flowers to to be determined by the cemetery commissioner's guidelines or something like that. And then we could, you know, after the fact, Therese can talk to Cecil about here are the options that, that are, you know, because I, I would rather act on it rather than, you know, wait another two weeks to do it. Okay. So yeah. basically. I mean, I mean, that's just me. We're only one. So you're, well, you're so. still discussing your motion. So you're saying Chris moved, Paul, second, allow artificial flowers, Memorial Day to Labor Day, mandatory cleanup. Um, first Saturday after Labor Day. This is your trial run, but you're going to say artificials are flowers are allowed per the cemetery commissioner's guidelines. That's what you want to amend the motion to. Well, I think it gives him suggesting. the opportunity to say, okay. you know, this is how it needs to be secured, or whatever, you know. Yep. Okay. And, and then we can get check with other communities that already have these policies that already have been through this, just to look at to give you guys a better idea. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to be able to give us some wiggle room to allow the motion to move tonight with the only piece of it that we still have to research is just exactly how, exactly how would it have to be attached or placed near the gravestone. Does that I, sound? I just think we, we need to say that, uh, uh, that all of the decorations need to be securely, uh, they need to be securely attached to the, to the site, whether it's planted in the ground or weighted down or on a, what, but it needs to be securely attached, installed. I mean, we already in the policy, we already give the cemetery commissioner the power to make the determination on, you know, if Bucky wants to plant a, a rose bush on his site, he can go to Cecil and say, hey, we want to plant some wild roses. And and then, you know, we already have that yep, it's in opportunity, there. you know, that power there. And I think we somehow could just defer that, the attachment placement piece of it to the commissioner. No, I mean. On my family, we have a flowering perennial bush that we planted four years ago, and there's flowers there every year, and absolutely nobody complains about it being in the way. Mm -hmm. I know the discussion's over, but I think you guys aren't listening to Cecil enough. I mean, how many years has he been on the committee and it hasn't worked? He's been the cemetery commissioner a long time if he's going to continue after tonight. Right, that's what I'm saying. You guys gotta listen to him. He, I know, I understand, but 
but also you're not thinking about the environmental part of it. Plastic is a thing of the past for our environment. everybody. Um, you know, for me, I'm Nicole Sierra, I'm the chair of the energy committee, and the biggest thing for me is just efficiency of the mower. So if we can figure out a way to get that mower running back and forth as quickly as possible, get the person who's running the mower in and out as quickly as possible, that will be helping the environment and helping the town. Makes sense. Yeah, and I, I complete. I, I, we, we hear, you know, where Cecil's at with it. it you know, and I'm sure we've been down this road a half a dozen times and made the same commitments, but um, I guess one nice thing that we do have nowadays with modern technology is, you know, notes in the past, maybe you can't find the notes or they're not very detailed, but you can look up on ORCA and you can get exactly what was said at the meeting and who was there and, you know, who raised their hand, who didn't raise their hand, so it's, you know, I think that part of it's a little more exciting now because then you know, the responsibility falls on others to help, and it's well documented that way. Um. So just to recap, the current motion still is that to allow artificial flowers more in a trial trial run. Um, well, I don't, a I, Memorial yeah, Day. I don't know what you need to say okay, trial run because technically, then. right now, the policy says. Yeah, that's true. They'll be removed, removed if they're unsightly. If they're unsightly. So, so I mean. I guess you'll leave that portion in there and just. But uh, move to allow artificial flowers, Memorial Day to Labor Day, mandatory cleanup the first Saturday after Labor Day. Um, but I guess you would say allow artificial flowers per cemetery commissioner got cemetery commissioner's guidelines is what. You're uh, suggesting. Oh, what was the last part? Allow artificial flowers per cemetery commissioner guidelines from Memorial right. Day to Labor Day, mandatory cleanup first Saturday after Labor Day. Right. And then with those guidelines, we could spell out exactly what Jean and Paul are saying, which is all decorations need to be securely attached to, to the stone or the plot. And, you know, Cecil could specify how many, you know, if, right. if Cecil's still the cemetery commissioner tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, so... Uh, At least it would give him some input since he's the one who does, you know, the work, but. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we're here in Davis. He did. You're right. He, did. he doesn't that's, want. That's basically the end of the story. I mean, that's what, that's what he's here for. Yeah. He does. You're lucky if you don't lose him now, and then you can't. Then there'll be. Won't be good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll police Gilly, but I'd be more happy to police Gilly and, and uh, if he does not slightly take pictures of it and send it to you, mm -hmm. if that will help. I mean, uh, Okay, so we had a motion and a second. I, I appreciate uh, being in consultation with Cecil, but I think that that's according to select board guidelines. It's, it's Cecil's job to implement the policy it, or uh, uh, that's yeah. That's Did my opinion. Or both. In yeah. Collaboration. Okay. In collaboration with, but because um, the only reason why I said with the cemetery commissioner, because we do empower the cemetery commissioner currently to make some decisions that aren't necessarily our decisions within the policy. Well. He, because well, you have the, yeah. Because like right now, if, here. if you wanted to plant a bush, he could, you could say, I want to plant a bush in this location. And he comes out and looks at it and says, yes, I'm good with that. And this looks good. And you could plant that. And I think that's the same thing that we're talking about with fastening the flowers is he would say, here are the, I don't know, here are the setups that are acceptable to be put in, mm -hmm. In, in place to attach the artificial flowers and or other yeah, I mean pieces, the, right? It says the select board or the select board is the commissioners and then it does talk about that there's an appointed representative commonly known as cemetery foreman. I just think over the years we've referred to him as the cemetery commissioner and there is a couple places in here in which um, the cemetery, unless said work is approved by the cemetery foreman, you know, so there is a couple places. This one, that, E. 
The uptown trees and shrubs shall not be planted in the town cemeteries without the consent and or direction of the cemetery foreman. So you're right, if you, if you put up to cemetery foreman guidelines, you would be consistent with the existing policy language. Would it be? Hold on one second, Janice. Look. All right. The town uh, trees and shrubs shall not be planted in the town cemetery without the consent and direction of the cemetery form. Yep, and that's the yep, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's what we're saying there. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. So, yes, Janice. I'm just wondering um, to avoid any misunderstandings if maybe there shouldn't be one of the ladies um, to consult with the select board and the cemetery commissioner um, instead of just the select board because their, their wishes, and they know more about it certainly than me, um, as far as with that planter and the hook and everything. Maybe there should be one of them that could um, review the guidelines before yeah, they're adopted. Yeah, review them before you know something is done, which and I, I got to think. I got to think that Cecil will probably be more than willing to hear, hopefully, um, you know, options that that have worked, let's say, um, or what the options are out there for attaching things. Um, and or or Therese, you can send. You know, yeah. <laughs> Therese is like yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, to do that, and it might be a little bit of a you know. A, yeah. Hopefully, this is a positive direction, you know, and hopefully we're not sitting here next year, and and Cecil saying I told you so, nothing happened. I think the and, whole thing hinges on. And I'm hoping that we're maybe just having a conversation that hey. Uh, we need to try this different attachment or something that works better for the gravestones. Or something. I don't yeah, know. But it's not, I mean, maybe hoping the it's positive. So. Is attached is and secured oh. kind of covers that. But anyways, it's okay. Still so have a full I, agenda. I want to add the words "secured to the gravesite." Okay. That doesn't say you have to have this kind of secured. You want to add secured to gravesite in the cemetery in the in this in the, in the guidelines period of time into the guidelines uh, or I into the motion. I want to say in in this yes in in this experiment to go from now until Labor Day yeah. with a volunteer cleanup day mm -hmm. that we permit. Uh, artificial flowers provided they're secured to the gravesite so that the wind won't blow them all over and etc. So and how or, that happens or, I or you could say I can't support that. I will have to vote no that you put that in here. Or you could say that they have to be secured per the cemetery foreman's Maybe guidelines that, or something like that. Okay. You know what I mean? I just want it more. I want that's it right. understood right. that it's no longer right. unsightly. Okay. That's the guideline. <laughs> Secured per select board and cemetery foreman guidelines because Dave is right. I mean, you can't just say anywhere on the plot that's too vague. It's going to have to be very specific within. I'm so sorry. We tried moving the tables around. Now you're blinded. But <laughs> it's going to have to specifically state, you know, I think specifically so sorry. many inches from the stone or whatever to make it easier. So, um, but I, I will add that to the uh, secured per, um, allow artificial flowers secured per select board and cemetery road, cemetery foreman guidelines. Okay. That's All right. So the question's been moved and seconded. So discussed. and discussed thoroughly. So just call for all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Lindley so we got yes. three, four, five. So is this, this is for the rest of this year? For what are we talking? Yes. 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 This year. And we'll just evaluate at the end of the year and see how things went. Things went well, we can continue moving forward. If things didn't go well, then we need to relook at this. That gives 
the opportunity for everybody here, I think. So we appreciate everybody coming out. Very well. Mm -hmm. Very well. Be careful on the cords on your way out because they are trip hazards. So. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> Did you want these bags? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I thought, I thought you could hold it down. Uh -huh. And plus we get an email address. Sure. Do you need to get lucky emails and clean up and everything? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll post on Front Porch Forum okay. and Facebook. Yeah, but absolutely. Send it. Send it. Send it. Send um, no, it's the town of Bethel, but you could also just call the office tomorrow and talk to Kelly or whoever answers the phone. Okay. All right, thank you. Is Mr. Isham okay? Yeah. Aaron will scoot him out. Yeah. All right. Hopefully we can snap, snap to the rest. Lindley said she had to step away. I'm pretty sure. You got to go that way. Yeah. Yep. You can go. Um... Well, that way, you probably don't want to go no, that way. No, I know. Oh, yeah. I don't want to go this way. Based on this history, you're going to have to find the information. Yes, I'm pretty sure I will tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. What's that? No. No, I don't. I'm busy right now. Grant needs a summer job. I'll see you in September. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take a look at this. There you go. I wasn't so shy. I just said, I need an offer to recycle them in my case. Oh. <laughs> Addie loves flowers. Yeah. Just want to make sure that everybody All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Chris, in, in this whole uh, conversation about um, the cemetery guidelines, uh, one of the, some of the guidelines, um, no. There are increasing numbers of people now who are seeking a green or a natural burial, which is without yep. casket, without anything that is not biodegradable. It is about two feet deep. Uh, in, in we don't have, in our current policy, any provision for that to happen in any of our cemeteries. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I'm wondering if we might not want to look into yeah, I can, I'll have whether to. that's a possibility, sure. either within current cemeteries or within other public parks that we might have, that people might want to, uh, if they were to choose that option, that that might be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what the current state regulations are. There was a book put out by the Secretary of State's office a while ago, and um, I think that they're the ones who have the rules to that. Um, I know that well, we recently had a, a select board member pass, and I think and they did a green burial. So, but I'll look so into we, it. Yeah, we just had a, a friend who had a green burial too. So, um, yeah, I'll look into it. Yeah, I, I just think it would be something that if we could provide for that. There are five places in Vermont right now that do. All right. Well, we'll find out what our legal options are there. All right. So we will move to the Energy Committee because they have been so patiently waiting okay. around. I'm going to move <laughs> to the other one. Well, <laughs> um, and some people are actually composting themselves at this point. They have facilities to compost mm -hmm. um, deceased people. So yes, we are here to talk more policy, purchasing policy, um, and it was really good to hear a lot of the crowd talking about the environment tonight. And you know, we heard one person say, you can't solve the problems of the world, and another person say, you have to start somewhere. And with the climate change mitigation and adaptation activities, that's really what we're falling between. You know, we have, it's such a big problem, we can't handle it. And then we have, this is a small town. We really can start here. Sure. Um, and so we're here to kind of start with a small step. This should be familiar to you because we were here last year. Yep. And we went away with the promise of looking into the RFP requirements and vehicle purchasing policy examples more. And over the past year, we've actually hit a lot of roadblocks. So we're kind of coming back to you with the same thing, just with a little more information. 
All right, so I just want to um, let the, so the select board was given our updated policy and I just highlighted the yellow changes that you and I had gone back and forth with um, about, you know, edited. So on my version included the edited energy committee suggestion, so which I had emailed with you or, or maybe we did a Google Doc. And uh, so, so those are in here. So you put our edits into the purchasing policy so they can be seen. They did. Nice. Like we haven't got to see them. Like and uh, so I did do that. And um, you know, with the uh, with the edits that I had made, but I already sent you those. And then um, I have your town of Thetford Green Fleet policy and and the other you know certificate of compliance and all that stuff to go with it. And my recommendation to the select board was. Um, that obviously you had some small edits for the purchasing policy, but your newer updates of the town of Thetford, you know, your example of the Green Fleet policy and that information, I actually think should go to the equipment committee for their review before the select board really, you know, for their input and take on it before the select board really discusses it because they're the committee that helps pick, you know, what equipment we buy. And we were actually talking about how much we wanted to yeah. have them be part of the discussion. Yeah. So you're thinking we would present it to them and hear their feedback in real time? So I would, yeah, I was just thinking I'd give it to them at our next, before our next meeting, because we're actually supposed to meet, I think, I think we're going to meet again in a couple of weeks, because we met before uh, a couple of, maybe it was a week ago, I lose track, but within the last two weeks, I've met with the energy committee, or I mean the equipment committee, and they're talking about a couple purchases, and so they kind of had gone back and forth, we needed to gather more information, so what I was thinking was when we set, I set their agenda, I could just give them the policy, and then they could discuss, you know, any changes or their thoughts on it, and then I could just give you, you know, the input from the energy, from the equipment committee. Um, so to be clear, we're talking about the general policy edits or the vehicle purchase? The vehicle, the, the, the vehicle purchase oh. policy, yeah. I just figured since they're the, the ones who, you know, are in the trenches, it'd be good to get their opinion and... Um, about what they think about it, yeah. what's possible. We like to join the discussion yeah. and, yeah. you know, just hear some feedback. I know a lot of times when, like, climate change warriors join a discussion, people are hesitant. Yeah. So they're like, you're just going to shake your finger at us for using gasoline. Yeah. Um, and that's not the energy that I oh, don't bring no, at all. No, <laughs> that's not you. I don't worry about that. No, I just want them to see it and, uh, you know, get their feedback. But I can let you know. I, I don't have a set meeting day, but when I do, I can let you know. Right. And it's not via Zoom. We're old school. They meet in the garage looking at equipment at the town highway. So this is, there is no Zoom option here. And, um, yeah. and so, I think, but I'll let you know. Yeah, and I think some of the challenges that we have, and I've been, been lucky enough to be on the board for a little bit and have been through some purchases of equipment, and I think, I think the thing that's challenging for our town, but not just our town, but a lot of towns in our area is, like, I think we always want to, you know, have the opportunity to better ourselves in many different ways. And in this case, we're talking about the environment. But when we have the options, and Doug's been through this, we pretty much, it's like, okay, we need to get a, a, a new town truck to plow snow with, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, here's the only one available. You know That's what I mean? True. It's like, and, and it's like, often we can't even, Often, you know, if we just take the environmental piece out of it, we don't even have the opportunity to say, okay, well, what did Ford say versus GMC versus Freightliner? You know, usually it's like, okay, so-and-so's got one Freightliner. <laughs> like, if you want it within six months, it's here. Like, and here are the specs on it. And that's actually the situation yeah. and it's, right now. We're looking at a truck that And it's even worse order. right now because there's of just one. the what's going on. Yeah, there's um, one Western Star that we're getting a yeah. price on from ATG, and there's one. These guys yeah, happen to pre-order a truck. It happens to be similar to the Western Star we have, but that's it. And the other piece is used. Yeah. So it's almost like, yeah. Like, right, right. And it's hard right now. when it comes to purchasing yeah. and what's available in the industry. Sure. Balancing everything that you need to balance. Uh -huh. So some of what is in here, I don't know if you saw the vehicle request form. Yeah. That was just something like that's an original creation from Yeah, just something. Yeah. And the process I kind of have in my head is that we have some sort of way to be transparent to the town, like taxpayers, residents, about what we bought, why we bought it, and how it does benefit the town. So what you're talking about is the why. Why don't we upgrade? Why aren't we going to fossil fuel free? Because we have a lack of options for now. 
the industry is changing so quickly that a decade from now, if we don't have a process in place, we're going to be missing opportunities because we're so used to having them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly yeah, no, we get it. right now we are transparent about our process. I mean, the equipment committee meets, they bring it to the select board, the select board sees the specs. and But it's actually, unfortunately, been the last couple of years that we just don't have options. It's this or nothing or wait. And, and, and so it's, it's been a difficult time, but certainly you're right. Those things in the future will change. And, um, right now it's, and it won't be forever. Could just be, you know, hopefully just another knock on wood a year, you know, or so as the, as more equipment is, is built and, and, um, we have, once again, have options, but, which would be a beautiful thing. But things that we typically do have a little more control on is, from what I've seen is anyway, is, and we, we're hoping to do some of this, we haven't, but you know, when we have the opportunity to upgrade like the temp garage, yeah. like there, I think we have more control over saying, yes. hey, have we thought about whatever, solar or you yeah. know, something like that to power the garage. Yeah. We have a lot more control on that because it's something we're building. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one thing that I, on the bid criteria for bid selection, um, I would like to add a, uh, a line that said not just price, we're going to consider price, but I would like to add operational costs, anticipated operational costs and maintenance. Where, where are you? What? Um, this would be on page two of... of the actual purchasing policy, or well, I'm sorry, yeah. G, I just need to be able to See know where to make process, it. process bid specifications, and then portion. down. It's almost at the end, just before exceptions. Okay, let me just get there. Okay, criteria for bid selection. All right, I got gotcha. you. All right, I would like to add operation and maintenance, anticipated operation and maintenance costs over the life of the vehicle. Well, that's going to be tough, but well, uh, I mean, we have some that we've bought trucks that are great and some that are lemons. I well, mean, I, you know. I know, but the, here again, here's where comparing in, in the automobile market, we're not talking trucks, but in the automobile market, the maintenance is different for an electric motor than it is for a gasoline engine. Right. The, the cost of fuel is different if you are running a different kind of fuel. So I think that over the lifetime of the vehicle, the purchase or our anticipated use, whatever, that we ought to consider not just the initial cost, but whether any of that will be recouped. So anticipated operational and maintenance costs over the lifetime of the purchase. Right. Fit under any other factors that the select board determines are relevant and appropriate in connection with a given project or service. I would have okay. thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's. Well, it would it would fit. I just uh, there. I just I don't want to say price and leave it at that. I could put under any other factors that select board determines, including. Anticipated operational maintenance costs, or something like that. Right. Include it there if you'd like. Um, Does the equipment uh, committee something take that into consideration? Not just the cost, but it's. I think so. I mean, it, it's hard. You know, in this market, it is what it is. I mean, obviously, we're buying diesel trucks, and that's what we're buying. And we, we like we said, we don't have a lot of options right now. What's on? You know, because. You know, luckily, ATG bought a truck, and they, because they were only allowed to purchase one, and they didn't have a buyer mm-hmm. just yet. The only thing we can do is change the color, and uh, so from red to green, if we go, if the equipment committee, you know, makes that recommendation to the select board. But I mean, I think they do. These guys are all equipment, you know, owners, operators. It's it's Ray Blakeney, it's um, Ryan Slack, Jeff Gilman. Um, Mo Brigham, um, I'm missing somebody. I mean, they take into consideration like trade in values. Well, oh well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we build the capital plan, we always take in the, you know, we always try to come up with a number for trade in, and then they do. Like a couple of years ago, they put, they chose to put ten thousand dollars into the grader because 
they said the stuff that was coming down the pike was not, did not have a good reputation, was breaking down a lot, so they felt that the money was better spent keeping the greater that they had and, and putting that money into it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do think that they certainly take that into consideration, and they all have experience driving different or operating different brand name equipment. And someone say, oh, don't get that, that's junk or whatever. And we've also gotten, um, now we purchased the extended warranty because pretty soon nobody's gonna be able to work on vehicles. It's all gonna be computerized. So we do buy the extended, you know, so it kind of goes cradle to grave where we're covered. So if a computer dies, you know, we have some help there, so. And, and I, I'm not criticizing no, I don't I, think I'm were. simply saying that that's a criteria that I would like to see considered. Okay. Well, I can put that in there and, and to either a separate or... Does that fall time. into like the... I mean, it, there's always in every selection criteria or sign-off, there's always like that catch-all phrase, right? And ours is number 10 is, you know, yep. any other factors that the select board determines are relevant and appropriate in connection with a given project or service. So That's what it, it's kind of like a large umbrella to say, maybe maybe we're going to go with this one because it's five thousand dollars more, but it as a bio diesel or something. Costs, et cetera. You know, well, it, so I think there's like a catch-all in there now. Well, but. there is there is a catch-all. I'm just requesting that we say it. That's all. But I mean, I, I, one would think that when we purchase anything, I mean, it could be a copier at the at the office that we would be looking to see, would be looking to see those yes. comparatives of how much we cost, how much is it going to cost for maintenance over time, what's the end, yeah, end benefit. You're absolutely yeah. right. I would just yeah. like okay. it spelled out. <laughs> and I think maybe that language, I think it is appropriate, but it might be better in a, a purchasing policy that's specific for vehicles yeah. versus in the general RFP okay. uh, bid criteria. I can, if that's what the select board wants, is, are you comfortable with that, Gene, putting that statement more in a green fleet policy? Or do you want sure. it in the general? Okay. Sure. I, and I think the toughest thing when we're talking about like green fleet, you know, going that direction is, I think, well, one, the obvious piece right now is m most often is those those pieces aren't available to us um, within the amount of time that we need them. But the second piece to it is the infrastructure piece of, you know, if it's biodiesel, then how do we get biodiesel? You know, or if it's, if it's electric, how do we charge, the, you know, I mean, there's, we have a bunch of those pieces in it. Those are the kinds of things so. I'm trying to, want to make sure are considered as part of, as part of the price. Right. Um, do you know pieces, do you mean pieces like, pieces that you don't know until after? What's, um, can you give me an example of that? Like, pieces, well, what was the say? question again? It kind of said like there was parts of things that you don't know until after. Um, does that have to do with the bid selection or purchasing vehicles or? Uh, what did you say? I don't know what you said. <laughs> I was taking notes, I was yeah, listening I'm to you. <laughs> One of the I appreciated about the, the other town Tepper. was the record keeping about the maintenance, the miles driven, uh, the, the, or the time put on the grade or whatever the... Or the measure. warranty work done. But keeping, keeping those records <laughs> so that you have some sense sure. the next time around when you when yep. need to upgrade <laughs> or purchase yes. of, of what what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Morgan does that. Because mm. let's say we buy an electric snowplow, yeah. and then we crunch the numbers, and it turns out that it's getting sourced from you know a coal-fired energy plant. Mm -hmm. And we're running this electric snowplow, and it's using more energy, and it's dirtier energy, and we're not record keeping, so we don't know. You know, I think that having some sort of inventory of our emissions, uh, when I say increasing transparency, that's what I really think about is, you know, my, my household pays taxes, and the taxes pay for gas for maintenance vehicles. How much gas are we all taxpayers buying? Mm -hmm. How many fossil fuel emissions are we, you know, down the line responsible for? Because that's what we're here to do, is to decrease the amount of gasoline that we're burning. Because gasoline's just fine if you don't burn it. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. So we have a new road foreman, and um, he is, you know, just, and he did start um, a, a new um, 
record keeping system for maintenance on all the vehicles and and everything. So that that is happening. Um, mm -hmm. Emissions is something that I mean I don't know. It's in the purchase of the vehicle. It talks about it. Um, certainly, it's um, within you know the 12 page specs of a of a new truck or whatever. But um, so do we log, so they log, you know, maintenance and what's done and, and, you know, their time cards say what they have done for the day, but are we, we don't currently have a software system that logs exactly what was what. I did talk to Ryan Slack about that at the state. He wants the, he, he inputs that data for the state and he feels that the state should share their software with us, but they won't. So, um, but anyway, so it, it's it's like anything, I guess. It's baby steps, but yeah. we certainly are keeping yeah. records for it. Of yeah. Our, yeah. You know, not just the emissions, but everything that's happening yeah. would be really beneficial. Yeah, it would be. And, and um, so that was something that actually he and I were talking about, um, I don't know, within the last month. Um, but in the meantime, Morgan has, you know, set up a record keeping system. So about the equipment. So we don't keep track of how many like gallons of gasoline or fuel that we use to fuel the vehicles. No, down. well, you know, there's we a budget that you vote on, and um, uh, and yeah, I mean, and so there's per a vehicle, per vehicle. We don't. No. There's a log. There's a yes, there is. There's a log. Yeah. There's yes. A, a, a fuel there is a log. Right yeah. Every uh, there's a paper log. So every fire truck, every police car, every grade, whenever it's it's got put via you know gas in it, it's there's a date. I think who did it and um, everything. So yes, there is a log. Um, it's paper, and I actually use it twice a year to bill other departments. I bill the police and the fire department for what they use out of the highways tank for um, gas fuel. or yep. diesel. So. Yeah. So, you know, as we're kind of thinking about, you know, purchases, I really always think about maintenance when I think about purchases, because everyone likes to buy the new thing, but maintaining the new thing is really where it's at. Um, and that sort of record keeping, if, you know, what we're saying as the Energy Committee mm -hmm. is that we need to bump it up a little so that we do know how much gasoline we're using and that we can access that as residents know, you know, like we used one million gallons of gasoline last year. Um, and this is actually really relevant um, to this year because, so we have some numbers in our Appendix B of the town report, and in an average year, the Bethel residents, I don't know if this includes municipal vehicles, um, buy about 800,000 gallons of gas. So during a year where gas is $3 a gallon, residents are spending $2.4 million on gasoline flowing out of the community. This year, if we're averaging $5 a gallon all year, it's $4.1 million right out of town to the gas companies. Um, and as I've mentioned before, this is, for us poor people, this is our time to recover <laughs> from our heating bills right. and spiking the gas. It's going to hurt people in the winter. Um, so, you know, energy is all... What's that? You bought it, eating you know, I'm trying not to. I don't know whether to wait or do it now. Is the price going to go up or down? It's right now. Yeah, and that's that's real to you know, like for me when I say growing up poor, like it's it's cute and funny, but I wasn't like able to take as many showers as I needed to. I would avoid showers because my hair was wet and my house was cold. And you're talking about a 16 year old girl trying to have some self confidence, you know, like I'm still in Bethel. It's not. It's not because my family was so great. <laughs> like, yeah. So I really do deeply care about energy use, how it's used, and the money. Not only the money on heating oil, but the money taxpayers are paying Bethel. Richest person in town, town of Bethel, we get all the money. So we got to make sure we're giving it back to the people who are working so hard to pay those taxes. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, so that we have gas certainly the road crew will do, you know, if they're grading, they'll leave the grader in one section and go back the next day to finish that section. So I mean, certainly, you know, it affects their budget, and they they're aware of that. So they certainly take um, responsibility for their budget, as does the fire department, and making sure, okay, you know, fire department's a little different. Not like they're out, you know, no one's out joyriding, but trying to make a good choices about, you know, leaving maybe a piece of equipment on someone's property so they can go back there tomorrow so they're not driving it all the way back to the garage to drive it back, you yeah. know, because it is, it's, it's, it's tight and, and, um, well, we've done a lot of things. I mean, I mean, it's not on the environmental things, but you know, up until a couple of years ago, you know, the fire department, they would just go fill up, you know, fill up the fire truck at the, at the gas station. Yep. Right. You know, 
So and now we buy everything, everything goes through highway and then they're able to, it saves us money in that case because they're buying bulk. Um, but um, you know, those are some things. I mean, I did anybody, so in regards to the notes that Therese had in, for uh, the amendments to the purchasing policy, did anybody have any issues with any of the notes that Therese had provided? No. Uh, good to me. Yeah, I thought they looked good. I know yeah. that was the um, energy committees. So the, we did have a motion this evening to amend the purchasing policy, right? Yep. So if we wanted to, someone wanted to make that motion, we could just amend the purchasing policy with the notes that were given, which seemed very reasonable. Did we want to, we want to check with the committee first? We're not doing anything with the green fleet policy. We're only talking about the existing purchasing policy, the yeah. green fleet policy. The green fleet, we were just discussing we were it tonight to make, oh, a, okay. All right. make All right. a decision on that okay. another time. I make that motion. That yep. we amend the current purchasing policy to include the edits from the energy committee and from Therese. Thank you. Lindley looks like she wants to second it. There she goes. <laughs> so all in favor of that? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, so I'll bring you a, um, a clean copy to sign. Um, I just realized I didn't have a second copy. So it. as far as the green fleet wait one is well, right now you're waiting for the yeah. equipment committee yep, to you know look good. through it and then yeah. have a discussion with the energy committee and so in the mean, so then they just adopted your other changes that you made. Then, then they just adopted those and approved them and put them in here. So that's great. Yeah. Um, kind of next thing on my mind is just pushing through these, this whole discussion about vehicle, um, you know, stuff. And this is going to be a big discussion as we've already seen. There's a lot of intricacies to the purchasing and external environment changes due to climate change and industry factors. Um, so just kind of thinking about, you know, how we're doing as a committee if we're able to have the capacity to really take on that discussion. And it's kind of like this, you know, like we can try, um, but something that's come up, I know I've read in the select board minutes about a regional energy coordinator, someone who is dedicated to helping implement the goals of the town plan that are related to energy committee like stuff as it's been kind of pushed over on us. Um, and it's something just we're going to kind of keep talking about within the committee and thinking about and gathering information on examples from other towns. Um, that's kind of what we decided we want to do at this point about it. Because this, these sort of discussions do require like a certain skill set. And you know, I don't, I don't want to live in Bethel for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, so just kind of thinking about how we can actually make sure that over the next decade, when it's most important, when there's droughts in Kansas killing 3,000 head of cattle, when you can't grow sriracha peppers and get your sriracha sauce, um, you know, when the Hoover Dam is drying up, the lake that feeds the Hoover Dam is almost below the level it can feed the dam to power electricity. So over the next 10 years, relying on volunteers to help the town implement these policies, I personally don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> I think that's a plan to fail. Um, we all, we do have volunteer capacity in town, but we know it's limited. Um, so let's all stay tuned on the regional energy coordinator discussion. Keep thinking about it. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll come back to that because capacity wise, moving forward on this, it is going to be hard because we are volunteers and you know, we got our own lives and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I think that uh, Jean has brought it up multiple times and I think that's something that we were going to discuss in the next um, budget round is to see, you know, what's the existing cost, what are they paying if Bethel, you know, joined, what that would that cost that would be to taxpayers. So Jean has brought it up multiple times and is championing that. So. Um, is something that we'll talk about certainly in budget season is that because there's a lot of stuff coming down the pike and and you're right it's volunteer capacity is limited and these these are the perfect discussions to have with your local legislators right I mean because regardless if it's energy or something else I mean typically what happens in Montpelier is hey we're gonna do this sends it to the town now it's yours to deal with oh we're not gonna give you any money or anything but you're gonna have to deal with this right <laughs> The yeah. So then, so then it falls on, <laughs> then it falls on to us, right? Who, you know, we are servants of the, the community, right? I mean, to be on the select board doesn't mean that you have a certain requirement to background or being on a committee, right? You're just there to serve. You're volunteering your time, and then it becomes 
we're not the experts, right? So, and that's and that's the challenge with like. That's yeah, true. Like oh, that's very true. Timing wise, I would love to do this for free for the rest of my life, but like I can't sustain that. In my right. Home. Yeah. <laughs> so I made a note then, and I'm sure that um, that Julie did too. That um, you know that the energy committee would like the town to participate in the regional energy coordinator. And I think it's very exciting because Vermont is, you, we've had the energy committee model for a while and I, I do feel like we are seeing that shift where we're recognizing we need a, a paid position within our towns or counties um, if you have multiple towns because the cost, it's not going to, I don't think financially it would make any sense. The way it's going to make sense is that the CO2 emissions are reduced. But if we're not keeping track of them in the first place, how are we going to know if it works? So, right. um, so it's kind of a ball of wax. And I know we've had a long discussion tonight, so I just want to keep things moving. I would like to go home and have some dinner. Sure. <laughs> uh, Gary Durr, who is the chair of the Randolph Energy Committee, is trying to get a get meeting together with energy committee folk or whatever to talk about this shared thing with uh, two, river? two rivers uh, from Brookfield, uh, Randolph, us, Rochester, okay. and I'm going to try to contact uh, Soro and see if there's anybody down there that would be, you know, kind of a, a small little gathering of communities yep. to talk Can about. Can you just send us that link to our offer? Is that well, it's email? just in the process of coming together, but oh, okay. yes, I will make sure that the Energy Committee... All right, that'd be a great place to just kind of research everything right there, everyone's in one room. <laughs> so, so they will, yeah. to have at these future discussions. If any of you are familiar, would be Johanna Miller. She works at the Vermont Natural Resources Council, um, and she heads VCAN, or helps direct that and manage that. Um, I just talked to her recently, and she was super helpful and more than willing to help in the future. Um, so look forward to the information about meeting dates and such. Well, thank you for your coming tonight and being patient. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Take care. We should probably skip over the historical society stuff. <laughs> Put it at the end. <laughs> oh. But I, I did pull up some numbers just so you guys would have an idea. Um, last year, we, after our art show, the historical society had zero profit because um, we did it for the Ford Fest and for, um, and then we gave you guys a percentage. So the Ford Festival committee got $80 from us after it and the town of Bethel got $42. We're not talking about a lot of money. I didn't submit this letter because probably knowing me, I would have said give the town zero percent. We are really trying to raise money for this this war memorial, and we went out and priced it before the pandemic. It was going to cost us about $3,500. We priced it just recently. We're up to like $6,400 for one war. So now we're kind of looking at maybe we do one really large stone and put the plaques for each war on that, and maybe we'll be able to save a little money. But I'm thinking to do all the wars. We're probably up to 45,000 um, if we do it. So it's going to be very expensive. We are looking at um, getting the stone donated. That'll bring some price down. But we have a very expensive project here that we are working on. We wanted to have the World War II one done by now. But now we're thinking maybe we're going to have to put them all on one large stone somehow with littler plaques on it. So, um, but last year we gave the town of Bethel $42 after the art show. The only profit from the art show for us is um, 
the money that we take in for um, them entering their picture. So there's not a lot of money involved. So if you want to prove the 10% or yeah. the 0%, whatever y'all make up your minds up, that's fine. Yeah. We're not done by a lot of money. So the, the history on, on this, Therese, do you know much of the history of yeah. why the town gets a certain No, I don't. I just saw versus... his letter. I just saw the letter in the I didn't set. know if maybe um, it was a bookkeeping thing or if it was a... I, I have no idea. I just... The Historical um, Society, Mr. you, you have your own, own account. We financial books. Yeah. Okay. So the town doesn't have anything to do with our financial Okay. Books. Yeah. So um, no, we just... I think it is just something that years ago when we started the art show, uh -huh. Um, we've always had space for nothing, um, so we gave back that 10%, gotcha. or 15%, whatever we were given in the past, that way. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I guess <laughs> just when I was looking at it, I was thinking, why are we even receiving anything? Yeah. That was my thing. And then, but, you know, um, but I didn't know if there was something. I, some story about it, or the way it, way it come about, or. Um. Well, I found out about it last year, and I said, "What? Well, give them forty two dollars?" That kind of laughed a little bit because it's really not helping. The and it'll buy something, I'm sure. But yeah, I, if I drafted the letter y'all had, I would have said, "Give look, to give y'all nothing, the town nothing." <laughs> I mean, we try to put money back into the community, doing something. You know, mm -hmm. we've got a big book we're getting ready to publish. This next month, it's going to cost us a good penny. Um, right. But it's up to you guys. Like the letter's been drafted by somebody. Yeah. I mean, discontinue uh, 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 <coughs> taking any commission from the art sale. Second. Yeah. No. Any discussion from the board? Oh, good. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There you go. Zero. Zero. Zip, do you do that? I'll get out of here before you take your hands. Thank you. No, just down to South Road, there's a Henry Memorial that is two for all wars. Yeah. Dave jinxed us. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, Dave, Dave's like the one that down said down. he wanted to be out of here before 10. He jinxed us today. Yeah. Okay. To state that. I'll put that on record. You jinxed us today. <laughs> Since Al Orca Media has it on record. So, good night. There's a gentleman in the back row. Is there something on the agenda you you wanted to talk about? No, I uh, I was here with my wife uh, a few months ago, and I wanted to be a part of one of the meetings. So. Oh well, welcome. I'm here. Oh, Thank you. you know what? And we're we're probably being rude, but I'm Therese. I'm the town manager. This is Jean, Dave. Chris, Paul, and Lindley is right there on Zoom. She's working out of town. So welcome to Bethel. I was mm. so I'm like, no one sticks around this long. So we were, <laughs> I was like, so well, we're going no, up. I'm like, well, you got Brian over I was starting here. to think so maybe he had a medical that. condition. We had to go check <laughs> out. <laughs> Just. Usually people a bit. So that's yeah. great. And uh, we meet the second and fourth Mondays. And certainly if you have any questions about anything, call the town office, check our website, whatever. And if you didn't know, you know, you can do it from, from home. Yeah. So, you know, if you didn't want to attend in person, but you wanted to review it as you were cooking dinner, then, you know, you can do it through the, the, the Zoom site too. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right. So All right. we had, uh, I don't know, Owen probably doesn't want to go. He's waiting. <laughs> um, Owen's got, uh, Babes Briar's got a couple of uh, Request. requests for uh, catering. Uh, one, uh, first one is for a catering event. Um, and then the second one is for an outdoor Permit. Does that sound right, Owen? Or it's a, it's a, it's still a request to cater, but oh, it, that's a cater too. Yeah. So okay. the first one is the stained glass workshop at Daybreak's Glass Studio, 285 Main Street, yep. on July 28th from 6 to 10, with about 12 people mm -hmm. um, expected. And then his second one he submitted today was for a dance party at Babe's parking lot, dated July 9th from 8 p.m to 12 a.m. with the anticipate or approximate number of people expected as 100. So just to be clear, Owen and Jesse need a request to cater permit because they're outside their outside consumption permit area. Is that correct, Owen? Is that fair to say? 
That's uh, my understanding. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Okay, so um, it's a funny form. So it says here, check one, approved or disapproved, and then the clerk. But you guys are the local liquor com commissioners, so you approve or disapprove, and then Pam puts her signature on them. So oh, we don't have to sign those. Nope. Pam does, but you have to approve them or disapprove them. Okay, Pam do we need a motion for each one of them? Or? Yeah. Or, yeah, I would do each. I mean, I think the first one's, I, I think the first one's relatively pretty easy. I, yep. I, I might have a comment on on the second one, but the first one, which is the, the Breaks Glass Studio one um, catering event for approximately 12 on the 28th of July, I'd make a motion to approve that one. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, set there. And I think the only concern I always have on when we're doing like anything outside, and I know we talked about it last year with with, uh, with the outside um, permit, yeah. um, it's just kind of making sure that the area is well defined. And um, and I know as liquor board, it's kind of we really don't have any power other than to approve it or not to approve it. Everything right. becomes state level like control at that point. But you know, I guess just the concern would be just to make sure that you know that you know yeah. if there is a hundred people that everybody's um, you know inside the boundaries and you know yeah. um, being responsible and. So it does say at the bottom of the permit that obviously that Owen you know or I say Owen personally, but Babes has to follow all right. the liquor control laws, must have a defined area for serving and consumption of alcohol with designated barriers, must have separate toilet and lavatory facilities available for both men and women, must provide sufficient number of employees for control purposes. And um, so it does say that right on the permit too, mm. which I'm sure Owen. Okay. Well, we also something. need to look at how it impacts the towns property there too. Yeah. I think in the past we've had to isolate that property, yep. that part of the property off. Right. Yeah, is that what you've done in the so, past, Owen, is just not allowed people to, you've blocked off so people don't access the town's property that abuts you? Uh, well, when we've done the forward fest, effectively, yeah, because the, the stage has been blocking that area, so no one would be able to really go over there. But for this party, we um, we're planning on uh, just blocking off the area where service would be happening and where people would be to be the same width and footprint of the building, which is um, 72 feet long. So basically from the wall of um, the north facing side of the building to the wall of south facing, we would have um, temporary fencing there. So people would be contained in that area. They wouldn't be in the whole parking lot. So just the size of your existing building from the little Correct. wall to your front door. Correct, yeah. Okay. And this is just to open up some more space because it's, it gets really, really, really hot in there. Um, oh, sure. And um, there have been like even this, uh, last trivia night we had on Thursday, I just got a message from several people that tested COVID positive and oh, no. it just feels like it would be best if we could be outside, but I do understand that. Um, so as far as parking would be concerned, um, nothing about the parking lot will be different on either of those sides, um, but people won't be able to drive through obviously. And do you, the DJ will be inside babes or out in the parking lot? The DJ would be outside, yeah. And that's what you've done before in Forward Fest? We have, yeah. It'll be a smaller sound system than that, but yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, so I just need a motion to approve the outdoor permit. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, all set on. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Good night. You too. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Thank you. And then we had um, Luis, um, the resignation for Lister, which I believe we had been anticipating this for yeah. some time at some point was coming. Um, and we, we had made. Okay. Second. Second. 
So if anyone's interested in being a lister, come by and see Mo and Judy. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, audit services, Sullivan and Powers. So nothing's changed yeah. from last. It's always the same scope. Um, and I included the original in your, well, I gave you one. You have to sign both. One stays with us and one stays with them. I think this is the last year of our three-year contract, but <laughs> I'll find out when I see him. Um, so unless you have any questions, it's just a motion to accept. All right. We'll Second. See. Dave and Paul. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. You guys want to start on your side? So you, um, it's only three lines, but you can sign on both copies, please, and I'll make a note that it's 72722. Uh, not 727. Jeez, June 27th. No, don't rush it. I know. So there's Awesome. Thank Seems you. like the summer is kind of flying by already. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, we haven't had a summer. It's been cold. I know. But it kind of seems it like we're already like July 4th already. Sunday morning, and you would not have been cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what were you doing? <laughs> would. Oh. Yeah, I bet. I, I was cold uh, Sunday because I, I was so recovering from my sunburn from Saturday. <laughs> so anyway, oh, because you went to Carl's. Oh, my whole like left side of my body was sunburnt by the time I got out. It was like you know where I was. Yep. Outside the tent, like it was like sun this side, no sun that side. That's right. <laughs> it was no. it was hot, yeah. <laughs> but what a, what an amazing turnout um, there. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about um, the funeral for Carl Russell, the select board member uh, who'd been on a few years ago, who recently passed. Well, I would say there was a couple hundred people yeah. there. Oh yeah. We set up two hundred chairs. And how many people were standing? There, there was about three hundred. How many of these views have? Yeah. Um, two. Um, just myself. There was probably 30 people there, I know. Yeah, yeah that's how many people he influenced outside of. Yeah, I heard it was a really nice tribute. Thank you, Paul. Afterwards, I was talking to a lady from Ohio. Yeah. That came. Of course, just found some citizens there. Yeah, right. And then the last, well, no, never mind. There was another one on there. So um, second to last, we had the resolution for sale of our, ha our stake in the Bethel Royalton Transfer Station. So this is something that we have been working on since for a March. While. Maybe, yeah, March sounds right. So, um, and we pretty much came to um, the conclusions there what, two months ago or three months ago? And now it's just really been getting diving into the nitty gritty numbers and um, so we, and getting legal's advice on language and yeah. um, so. So in your packet is the, um, so I had sent you via email um, the draft of the asset purchase agreement between Bethel and Royalton and we were kind of going back and forth. But to re quick reminder is, Chris and I had negotiated with Victoria and David Barker of the transfer station, and basically, it, it's just not a lot. I mean, we we came up with the numbers, which were easy because it's the value of what you know what's there. So, currently, um, the value of the built land, buildings, equipment values, uh, other assets, which was a lease. Um, minus some liabilities was 545595 and the deal is that um, the purchase price is listed as a split of that, that they would pay us um, a, a, a fifth of it, <clears throat> excuse me, at closing and then one payment per year after that for four years. The one thing uh, they'd also had asked to, they had taken our employee, you know, the employees will be transferred to Royalton effective July 1st. Um, they had agreed to have, since their benefits were a little bit different than ours, they had agreed to, you know, basically keep them whole when they slid them over into theirs. They have different retirement, different insurance benefits, and we had hashed that all out with them. Um, the other thing that Victoria and I had talked about was this kind of quote unquote true up because the town of Bethel currently has the books, so we're paying the bills and we're doing payroll, and we want to split July 1. So Victoria said, look, you pay them for the June days, we'll pay them for the two days in July, and then 
we'll do a true up, which is, you know, once we have received unpaid all of the July bills, we'll basically split the cash. We'll take the cash and any receivables minus the payables and we'll split whatever's there. If they owe us, we write them a check within 10 days. Um, you know, we owe them, we write them a check. So current, as of the other day, um, there was 121,000 in cash. <clears throat> I say all 20,000 of it we can't touch because we have to keep it in a savings account to make sure that our um, obligation to the state for the transfer station is covered. So we will collect their deposits until June 30 and then they will. So, you know, we all know that a Casella bill is, one of Casella bills 40,000. So I don't really see, um, you know, a big exchange here. Uh, our attorney asked us if we were gonna give money up front to Royalton. We said no, they said no, they have a line of credit if they need it, because we figure we'll need what's left in the coffers mm -hmm. to kind of pay this off. And uh, John has agreed to do his billing in the afternoon, June 30, as soon as they close, so we'll have an accurate receivable list. So um, that was, you know, the crux of it. I will say that the, um, <clears throat> the attorneys are having trouble adjusting the table of contents, so the table of contents <laughs> is not correct, but they, um, it's because Royalton's lawyer drafted it and then our lawyer made some changes and our lawyer was trying to fix it, but so. But anyways, those are the only changes and you were emailed that, um, so it does state in here, explains the true up as I just said, and also gives you the new monetary you know, number. And, and those numbers haven't really changed because Chris and I had come up with this preliminary numbers, which you've been aware of for since the get-go. The only thing that we adjusted was the regular tipping floor cost came in at 121,100. So we added that liability in and we did add that to the value of the tipping station building. So, um, and they agreed to those changes. So other than that, it's really what we've discussed. Um, so as a side note, the yearly payment that they'll be making to the town, mm -hmm. does that money have to go into a certain fund or does that go in the general fund or does You'll the, just, yeah. the put right. it to a capital fund? Or? Unless unless it's designated by the select board. Or the, it, unless it's designated. It'll go by. right into the general fund. If for some reason. Sorry. Can you just repeat, uh, Chris, your response to that question? I, I lost yeah, it. Yeah, I tripped, tripped over the mic and <laughs> it's been a long night. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So where, uh, what was the question? So again? the money goes back to the yes. general fund. So, so right now, unless the select board decides to um, repurpose that money into, we could well, the establish. Voters, the, if you want to establish a capital fund to put that money in, you have to go to the voters. The voters would decide. Um, they have yeah. to approve the capital fund and what's going to go into it. Okay. So in the meantime, the first payment, you'll and you'll be able to deal but, with that. But for now, it's all going to go into the general fund. Just that, yeah, that one installment, which would be them paying us, and then if we owe them money because of the true up, you know, we'll obviously deduct. I mean, I guess you cost. could go to the voters and establish a fund. Yeah, in March. And then over the next four years after that, you know, all the money could go in the fund and you could decide to do something with that money. Mm -hmm. um, or you could repurpose it into one of the existing funds mm -hmm. um, type deal. But, but the, you know, it's just going to dump into the general fund right now, Lindley. Uh, or yeah. Paul, yeah. There's no real restrictions on it. No. No. Don't have to put it towards the... So we'll be out of the loop as far as the... The mound out there, taking care of the No, nope. we will. We will never walk yeah. away from that liability. So we still have to pay something towards that on a yearly basis, or maintain a, a fund of some kind. The agreement was that as long as the landfill or the transfer station is in operation, mm -hmm. that whoever is running it will pay the closure right. costs okay. for as long as necessary via the state permit. Okay. But both. Bethel and Royalton have an environmental exclusion on their insurance policy, which states basically if a well was contaminated, I mean obviously we test for that on a, you know every year, and there's things protocols we do. We would both be on the hook for that, and and nobody's insured for that. Um, it's one of the things we we bring out in our audit too. Is that, is that so? Okay. Thank you. Um, 
But anyways, so that's the uh, existing agreement. The other thing that's here is, because you know it's legal, there's all sorts of stuff. There's a resolution which is outlines the sale and disposition of the Bethel Royalton Transfer Station. So in, in it, it resolves that Chris, as the chair of the select board, is authorized to execute and deliver the sales agreement. Um, and it talks about that he's also authorized to execute the note of sale of municipal real estate, which is a um, which is also in here. So to be clear, the select board has the right to sell the property, but the voters of the town of Bethel have the legal right to, they'd have to bring in a, a, a petition objecting to the conveyance signed by at least 5% of the legal voters of the town. It has to be presented to the town clerk within 30 days of the date of the publication and posting of the notice. And if um, the petition is presented, the town has to cause the question whether the town should convey the property to Royalton on the terms, you know, either at a special meeting or at the next annual town meeting. So. Um, you know, as always, the voters have have input and have final say. So. Okay. So we need a motion to accept the resolution. Uh, a motion to adopt the resolution. Yep. So moved. Second. Okay. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Ayes have it. So this notice about the. Uh, Taxpayers being able to come in with a petition, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. will be posted. Oh yes, yep. I think it has to legally. go in five places. Yeah, yeah. I think. Okay. Um, yep. It's been a little while since we've done one, but yeah. So yep. the resolution you can sign first, so we can start over there. If you guys want to sign the second page. And just for anybody that's at home, um, you know, again, like we had talked about before, the the. Our, our, us selling our stake in the transfer station doesn't change any day-to-day -day operations when it comes to our citizens on being able to dispose of their their waste. So um, we, we have told them that we, we plan to stay on as a member town. Um, and you know anybody that goes there now will be able to continue to go there. Um, We agreed to stay on as long as they pay us money. Ah. <laughs> yeah. You said, Will. That's, that's five yeah. years, right? Five years, I think, is what we yeah. agreed to. And then. I, I don't think, I don't know. According to them, I don't think they're going to hold on to it very long, but who knows? Wait and I don't see. know what they're going to do. So I just wanted to say that. Um, Bob said it was fine to have the select board consider approve the documents tonight. Advise them that there may be semantic changes made, but substantively no substantively no changes without their express consent. So we were waiting for approval from Royalton and um, their attorney Eli, which we did end up getting um, after. Did they? He sent they them. did their. They one do their the last... tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. Okay. Yep. So the agreement. Sorry, I'm not trying to find the right pages. All this legal ease. Is, oh. All right, so I will be the witness, but you have to sign right. Um, let's see. So you are right here. You're going to sign as the duly authorized representative. Right. And I'm going to sign here. sign here and then I'll ask Bob about the date. I think the date on this may be June 30th, but I'm going to have you. I'm not sure. I have to ask him about that date it's, uh, for the closing bank. While you're signing, uh, relay, uh, we had a uh, presentation by, I can't remember his name, but it's got a different credit card processing system Thank you. that we don't accept credit cards at the town office yet, right? No, we used to, and um, but because the it was people were charged a 3% fee. It, there wasn't really a lot of buy-in because people didn't want to pay that, obviously, on top of their taxes. Okay. okay. What does he have? He, this is all incorporated in the, the nobody, you, it, it's just slick. Nice. I mean, it, no, no cost to the uh, vendor, mm -hmm. the business. 
It's all right in the bill. Uh, <coughs> a person who uses the card pays the three percent. Right, and that's what we used to do, but there wasn't a lot of buy-in because people didn't want to up their taxes but, by three percent. But you put that in there as a, as an yeah, option. option. Yeah. It, yeah. It's in. It's it's really weird. But uh, where did I see it? Um, Central Market is is yeah. uh, working into working into the Clover system. Creek uh, House, I think, has the same kind of Creek House. Creek House. Um, so if you swipe roads down in South Royalton. So if you swipe your debit or credit card, they automatically charge you yeah. 3%? Well, it's kind of like, if, have you ever tried to pay like yeah. your uh, power bill online? Yeah. If you do it through your bank account, it's no extra. But if you do it through your credit card or bank card, then they automatically yeah. tack on a fee. Yeah. Probably yeah. just like that. Makes sense. Yeah. If you yeah. use the machine, it's, they tack okay. it right on right up front. It's probably not a bad thing to have, have the option. I mean... Mm -hmm. If, if, it, if it's no cost to us, I guess, right? Right. I'm just thinking about but the old days, it was a cost up front, you right? To, you have to yeah. just a program and the equipment and blah, blah, blah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Crossroads but that's what they're looking to do at the, at the transfer station. We're there. The Crossroads have got the little handheld unit coming right to you. you put yep. your card in and it does all the math. Oh, I mean, most of them you can do right from, you know, now there's like yeah. a little plug in right from your phone. You can yeah. swipe it and be done. Yeah. The, uh, did we have any updates to the American Rescue Plan or we just had that on there as a placeholder? No, I just had um, two quick things. One is when I met with the equipment committee, um, you know, we have been talking about putting money into the roads, taking American Rescue Plan money, putting some money into the roads. The equipment committee, you know, looking at the cost of equipment as far as the difficulty of, of securing purchasing equipment, they're, you know, looking for another, maybe to take give them like 20 grand to put into uh, the purchase of an of the next piece of equipment or truck that they buy and, and I, I think that you'll be hearing from them shortly in, in the upcoming meeting so that was a request the other one was from Robert Geico that um, you know continued with um, pedestrian safety he would like to see um, us put in you know flashing light I think he's looking for a light maybe at this entrance and, and that entrance of town to kind of, he just really thinks that a flashing light somehow would, would really bring into the downtown and get people to slow down. But certainly we will have um, information from the Better Connections grant about safety opportunities and mm -hmm. so those were the only two additions that I had for the list. Yeah, lately the, the individuals that travel through town up Church Street and down Pleasant Street that are moving right along. Usually it's like, you know, we pick on the out-of-staters, but these are all the local kids in their <laughs> beefed-up trucks with, you know, I hear them blow by the house at 65. Yeah, so we, you know... You probably we, hear them go by all the time. So when the new budget starts in yeah. July, we did budget money for a portable, you know, sign because we've had a lot of complaints. Some Church Street we, people watch it in the morning and they're like, the, there you go. need a budget. Okay. The Sheriff's Department sit out there and just... Get everybody one day. <laughs> Let's write them all tickets because it's they're flying through there, especially with all those. I what one came through town, you know, I don't know, had been doing. I I looked just to see the other day how fast I normally travel through the downtown, mm -hmm. and it's anywhere between like 20 and not even quite 25. It's like 20, 23, 24 miles per hour, you know, to navigate through the downtown. And this person had to been doing like. 35, 30, 35, easy, and, you know, truck, big tires, you know, not easy to navigate through. And no. I was like, oh, jeez, you know. So we are good with that. Town managers report, anything left? Okay, you all set? Yeah. <laughs> that just in here is uh, that, so Morgan and I meet tomorrow with Rita Cito and um, Alan May for a better mm -hmm. roads grant program that you've heard uh, Brian, that? Brian and I talking about earlier. Um, Jeff Gilman's going to start on Gilead after the 4th of July to finish up uh, the work that we'd started last year. Um, continue meeting with Planning Commission, working with uh, the state uh, emergency management to try to get a FEMA to approve a phased grant for um, two large culverts, one Camper Road, one on Sugar Hill Road. So that's over a million dollar project. But currently FEMA is picking up 90 percent, and the town would be on 10 percent. What so culverts are these? These are one is on Sugar Hill, and one's up I think near Fords. That really big culvert. I mean, we've got three massive culverts I think on our six miles of Camp Brook, but. 
Um, currently, so we're in the early stages of the application, but if the feds are willing to give us 90%, um, you know, we, that's phenomenal. So obviously we're hoping that we get that. So um, This is called a replacement? Yeah, but, I mean, and they're massive. The road would be closed. Yeah, is huge. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the one in that, because then, because he abuts Sugar Hill, right? Uh, he's pretty close. Down, yeah. yeah, because, and what they want to do is upsize the one on Sugar Hill. So they're talking to the state right now about any hydraulic study that had been mm -hmm. done. And mm -hmm. But like I said, we're talking about, you know, this is definitely over a million dollar project. Right, it crosses the road right above Sugar Hill. Is that one big enough already? They're saying in there that no. So, but like so I said, them all within 400 yards. Could be. I mean, we're just looking at two specifically. But like I said, it's very yeah. early in the application process, and you know, we really what we need is a phased application. Yeah, we're not anywhere near. Right towards. I thought that was a cement. It's structure. a culvert. It's a, I've been, it's a, I've been down in there. It's, it's a 72 inch kind of squash pipe. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. so just so you know, but hey, can't. Be a 90-10 split. And that one isn't just a culvert, but the the inlet yeah. needs some work. The water is not yeah, appropriately get. Right up on the back and yeah. 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 Um, so we did receive our signed two hundred thousand dollar paving grant award for the four hundred thousand dollar Christian Hill project. Um, our, my structures grant application um, was recommended for approval. I haven't seen the grant um, award yet, so I'm not sure. Which one was that for? That's for the P-Vine, that little bridge where you come down Sand Hill. Oh, yeah. That one that constantly floods. So, yeah. but taking out that bridge and putting in a box culvert. Mm -hmm. So, um, they were adding some money, actually, for engineering, so I don't know how much he did. Uh, Cecil and I, well, we were working on a $750 grant to repair some headstones, but um, we'll see about that That tomorrow. would be nice to get. Yeah, well... We'll see tomorrow. And um, then I just updated you on the equipment committee meeting, and, and uh, that's it. That was a tomorrow would be better than tonight, because I can tell you what the decision would have been tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking it'll still be the same tomorrow. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's it for the town manager's report. Perfect. Meeting minutes from the 13th of June. Amendment um, in the visitors. Sarah is Sarah Danley with an N. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. I will fix it right now. Where we and on the last page. Wait, hang on. I gotta find the minutes first. I like to write it on the actual minute. Last page, last paragraph. Oh, here we go. All right, Danley. Wait, let me fix that first. Oh, oh. Dally, Danley. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And last page. Uh, last page, last paragraph. Dave moved to enter into executor session. Oh. <laughs> to be executive. Dave is the executive. Yeah, he's the executive of the, the executor executive session. Of the, yeah. <laughs> See ya. Nice. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. That's funny. All right, perfect. Thank you both. Okay, so just need a motion to approve as amended. So, so moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, there's some brief minutes, the update on the list, and um, volunteer spotlights for Neil Fox and Dave Aldrighetti. All right, anything else to come before the board? All right, hearing none, just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Check. Okay. Good night, all. Oh. See you, Lindley. Thank you. Bye, Lindley.